All right, we are recording. Tonight we are, Joel, do you want to go or do you want me to do it? Tonight we are starting a new campaign. We're taking a break from Savage Worlds and from from D&D 4th Edition. We're going back to good old-fashioned 1st Edition Dungeons & Dragons. Starting from scratch, rolling up characters from nowhere, putting together their equipment, throwing them into... uh, First, away. first, fourth level mystery, murder mystery. The assassin's not. You're Adam so chopping away. Our emphasis will be on character interaction, Sorry. teamwork, and um, we'll save the monster hunting and and, and slaying for another uh, another adventure. This will be good. Uh, good experience. We're going to be concentrating on experience. Uh, point. I'm going to be very meticulous in, in tracking that. I'm going to be very arbitrary. Okay. So that those who participate. More <laughs> arbitrary than uh, our usual DM? <laughs> you usually DM stingy. That guy's a slacker. He never gives that XP. <laughs> yeah, it's, like the, it's like if you're a chemistry teacher, if you participate and you are able to uh, like explain just Schroeder's equation and... Then uh, you're gonna get some points. Avogadro's not the Rutherford's goal for. Uh, do you get the uh, what is? Wasn't there a rule back in AD and D? You get an extra ten percent experience if your ability scores are over. It's X. Almost, if you're, I think it's if you're human. I thought it was anyway. Anyway, uh, it depends on your primary ability stat and all that kind of jazz. So are we, we can look that up. So we're gonna roll. You know, a- anything that you can show me in the player's handbook or the dungeon master guide, you're welcome to. Cool. All right. I, the one stipulation I had already placed to uh, Josh was because we're being so generous in rolling up your abilities that I'm not going to allow, allow any rolls for psionics. Not that you guys would be lucky enough to, to end up with them anyways. It's a fraction of a fraction. Of a fraction. I think it starts at 1% and then everything for over... Intelligence over of 16, add. 17, or 18 will add 2.5% to your Yeah, it's not a lot. Your odds. Right. All right, so it's 4d6. Drop the lowest, arrange them as you want. That's what we've done in the past. Uh, up to um, the DM. That is how I rolled it. Yeah, and um, I it in the email. and uh, we'll. Mike did homework. I know Adam's crazy. <laughs> if um, totally. I'll give you one mulligan for any roll that comes to a combined total under ten. All right. One. Oh, yeah, but man, one, one, one you use it, it's gone. So we roll, roll the six times. Yeah, right. No, I did yeah, actually the nine. Huh? Right, that. I was gonna write an so, bas- so for the people who are unfamiliar and are listening to this, there are six attributes that we roll for: strength, dexterity, intelligence. Constitution. If, if they don't know what AD is, they have to. <laughs> yep. Then they don't know how to use the computer. Wisdom and, char- and charisma. And what we're doing right now is, for each of those six attributes, we are rolling our six-sided die, dropping the lowest. And one of those six rolls, if 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 it's under ten, we can re-roll. Ooh, I got a, I got a fifteen. Oh, well done. I'm not going to allow more than two 18s for any one <laughs> character. That was the word about that one. So, oh. I've already got four. Does that mean I should re-roll solo? <laughs> <laughs> Only one score less than ten you can re-roll. Look at that. I don't mean, all the 18s. I is, that, is, that, is that for each character? <laughs> That's a, <laughs> come on. Oh, oh, I'm not so freaking oh, six. Six. Right. 15. Right. 15 not bad. Come on. Fortunately, that's not that Look at this guy. Oh, I don't do it again. I got 17. Oh my gosh, Josh got a 17. Out of all done. 18. Well, what did I get a 17? It's because my character yeah. didn't help me up. You yeah. read that right. Oh, sorry. That, that 6 was with all 4 dice. I didn't drop the lowest one. But it should have been a 5. Hey, Bob? You know who wants a character with all 8s? <laughs> 13 is my lowest. Oh my god. You're Jeff. like a genetically engineered super creature. Yeah, but you know what? Jeff's done enough. Everything is a mule. <laughs> He's never going to hit. Hey, thank God I'm a fighter. Oh, okay. <laughs> so here's my my debacle. I was 15 and 17. I was a clear magic user. Oh, my gosh. A debacle or a, or a conundrum? I think I have to move the clear for that. This he gets bonus with your, uh, your saving throws as well. Well, he also gets bonus spells with fighter with a magic user doesn't for better intelligence. I have three 11s, a 12, and a 15 so far. I can't even use the mulligan rule. I, I hope I uh, either... I had all teams. Think of that. 
Fifteen. That's very Shut up. You're gonna be kind of mad if you uh, you die the first <laughs> round out, aren't you? <laughs> I didn't roll anything less than 10, but I didn't roll anything spectacular either. But I'll take it. So that's one character, and I'll do this. We're all we're each doing two characters? I'm only doing the one for tonight. Alright, that's a good idea. I'm only going to do one as well, because it'll get too complicated. But I have to do one for Chris. So Chris is not joining us yet. So I guess I'll go. Ahead. I, yeah, I, <laughs> 17, 14, 14, 15, 16, 13. Oh my god. Oh, I got What's your 13 going to go to? 16, 15, 11, 12, 10. Can we go, can we go in order so that people can hear well, what people got again? Why don't, we, why don't you assign them and then we'll... So yeah. I, I ended up with a 13 strength, a 15 intelligence, 17 wisdom, 14 dex, 13 con, and 11 charisma. Which is not horrible. And what class are you thinking about? I am a, I am multi-classing cleric and magic user. What race? Half elf. Although Joel kindly let me resend me another cap for that. He was drunk at the time. <laughs> if I was drunk at the time, we know there's a problem. Uh, and and this is this is recorded on the internet too, isn't it? So, yep. Thanks, Josh. I'm going back not, to court uh, now. We're not rolling these in order, right? It's not like your first you roll is strength you, and your second roll is No, just, just roll them and then you can assign them. Okay. I'm gonna go with my important stats are besides dex. What do you want? I'm probably gonna hold on the ranger, huh? Dex and strength. A little bit of constitution. Oh, good. Okay. Oh, good. I got two sixteens. Oh. One for one. I know it's hard. After getting that six, my worst roll after that was a ten. Okay. Well, Chris rolled a better character than I did. Chris doesn't count. He's not here. He's dead to us. <laughs> So, do we have any healers in this party? Chris, is, Chris is going to be a cleric. And I have a cleric magic user, so yes. Okay. Because, I mean, I can roll my second character up as a healer instead of a ranger. No, we got two. Okay. I'm not going to do the second character just yet. I'm hopeful that I'm not going to die this session. Amen. Well, all, all I did for that second character was roll, roll the stats, Bob. Gotcha. So, I mean, I guess, I, I guess well... I guess they could change them. This Josh has change three whole points. What the plan was for them. Pretty easy. Not handy. I think we're okay. Right. Maybe you get some yes. I'll go for you. No. Mm -hmm. All right. It took me about four tries, but I finally got one at my office. That's awesome. That I love. <laughs> it's the best one since I had, since my two firms ago where I ended up with it. And after I, oh, that uh, happened. Are any of you guys one. being a dwarf? I have a dwarf. Oh, we've got a dwarf in fighting. We have a classic dwarven fighter. What, what does the dwarf get special? Are right, you going to talk here? Is the dwarven fighter that you have Bruner by any means? Is he what? Is his name Bruner? No, Jeff doesn't understand that. <laughs> what? Oh, okay, so I was going to say, I, I was going to ask if I could make my ranger a drow, but uh, never mind. I'll just stick with the elf. <laughs> I hate you. You just said you could, you, there was none of that allowed to yourself. You told me. A drow? Yeah. Yeah, thanks for running my joke, jerk. Nobody else here got it with me. Oh, I got it, but I was I didn't want to didn't think it was funny. I didn't want to be considered that geeky, but it's too late. I'm on the internet playing Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, really. You're on you're on my playing game. Yeah. Where are the listed uh, minimum abilities for the Rangers? I'd be in the Ranger. I am in the Ranger section. Alright, so dwarves get plus one constitution, minus one to charisma. Yep. Actually, works. Adam, you're being a ranger, right? Yes, I am. Don't ask me anything about being a ranger. Well, there's. I, I was kind of leaning on you guys for that. You have to have like minimum stats. Oh, well, Bob, uh, page it. 14. It's on bottom of page 24. No, page 14. There's a chart. Oh, it's even better than the. They've got it in text on bottom of 24. Okay. Page 14. I think that's what you want. That's actually where I race in clear class. Yep, that's what I want. Yeah, that's a great chart. Uh, thank you, sir. Um, actually, yeah. Okay, so Adam, Adam, Mikey, what was your dinner that was not as good as ours? 
Wait, Josh? What was your dinner that was not as good as ours? Uh, I I had um, fresh mahi mahi that I caught yesterday on the boat. Oh, Jesus. Are you actually home, Mike? Yeah, I am. Oh, my goodness. How'd you accomplish that? Uh, I've actually been home for the last week. Oh, wow. Yeah. Your pizza is behind mine. Yeah. yeah, so we went out, we went out fishing on the boat the other day. Oh, we caught 20, 20 dolphins. Yeah, yeah. Dolphins? Yeah, mahi mahi. Uh, dolphin fish, not not flipper. I was gonna I say, was gonna you eat flipper? I think it was legal. Yeah, yeah, it's not. <laughs> you can't get a flipper. <laughs> All right, so in theory, my hit points are or we're doing max hit die. So clear the d6, max d4. That's twelve over two, so that is six. You understand that's only for your first level here. Yes. Okay. Max, so I get 10? Plus your combat modifier, which for me was zero. So I'm invincible? <laughs> if yeah. you can get your strength to be 18, uh, then you get to roll a D100 for the second uh, strength. All right, is there any way you can manipulate your stats so you get a... He didn't have an 18. He he's, he's, uh, he's, uh, he's ready for an Acerac already. <laughs> uh, I need to come up with a name. I should have worked with that or You're gonna see a lot of names in this adventure that you're just gonna shake your head at. So I have. I'm ready to take notes. No matter what name you come up with, it's gonna be better than 50 of the names in this adventure. Bob. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hey, Adam. That's that's a horrible name. <laughs> <laughs> I'd rather like the name. What's up? Um, I have some good news for you, my friend. If you're gonna be a ranger. Joel, we need saving throws yes. today. In order to qualify for a ranger, I've your, your ability here. scores have to hit a certain minimum. And so right. uh, I'm going to tell you what those minimums are. And if you have an ability score for your ranger right now that is less than that, you just bring, bring that, that lower score up to the minimum value. Okay. There's so actually you might want to jot this down. Castle Garden here. Yep. That's an orc okay, named The minimum strength yuck. for a ranger is 13. Okay, they got that. Minimum intellect is 13. Okay. Minimum wisdom is 14, and same for constitution. Do you have a name? Okay, so Joel. Right, please don't make a copies. Don't make a copies. No copies. All right. All right, so Dar I'm, I'm the only wizard right now, though. Dar you are the only wizard. War fighter. I'm sorry, magic user. Dar okay. You stayed up all night thinking of that one, huh? <laughs> all right, Joel, what do we have for spending money and what are we giving? Oh, you didn't see my email about that? Or did you? I saw it. We got five gold uh, pieces and ten silver pieces. Yep. That's yeah, it. that doesn't buy much. <laughs> I thought that was our loose change after we bought everything. We're pretty much naked. <laughs> there is starting the money chart on page 35 of the player's handbook. Oh, well, also, yes. hey, don't patronize him. Adam? Yeah, Bob. If you're trying to roll your hit points here. for your ranger, uh, just gonna he said we could do max, right? So <laughs> you need a 16 max. Okay, so I have 16 hit points. Yeah, you're doing all right. You suck. What does he have? 16. Rangers get two d8 to start. That's right. Yeah, but that's only to start. Yeah, after that it's d8. All right. Oh. If, if you'd rather, I'll let you roll up your yeah, starting money, when, 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 and you get 10 percent of what you roll. 10. All right. So you guys hear that? You guys do not need no. money. You're gonna. You've got to accumulate money. Joel said, "If there's starting money chart on page 35 of the player's handbook, you get 10 percent of what you roll." Unless you want to take the um, default, whatever I said before, five, five gold pieces. pieces and ten silver pieces. Wait, I'm sorry. What was the What was the deal with the starting? You can either start with five gold and ten silver, or you can go to page 35 of the player's handbook and roll under the starting money table that's there. What was the minimum you said? How much gold? Five gold and ten silver. But or, I can get fifty to two hundred. No, gold. Yeah, you can get ten percent of that. What does that mean now? I rolled two d six and I rolled an eleven. What What are you? I'm a thief. So twenty twenty to twelve gold pieces and what you roll? Eleven. So that's a hundred and ten. You'll get you got ten percent of that. So you start with eleven gold pieces. You got just about the same thing that that I would have given you in the other. You double it. Yeah. Okay. You doubled it. <laughs> okay. So I have eleven gold pieces. All right. 
Do I roll fighter or magic user? Do all of you not care? I'm cleric or magic user. You roll care? both of them and average them. Come on. I can do that too. Yeah, just do that. And that's and that's what we start with. And then we have to buy things from there, right, Joel? Right. But you're not buying them before you head out. You got you guys got to head out and get to Garotten. So if you got to right. buy something, you better hope that it's there. I rolled a 14. What are you? Fighter. So, well, did you roll 5 d4? for some shit before we leave. Like money. So you have 14 gold pieces. What die did you roll for that? 5 d4. 5 d4. You don't get that. It's different on page 30. 14 gold pieces will, will go a long way in in a small village like Rotten. Okay, 15 and 100. <clears throat> what do I have on me right now? A bag of moldy tangerines? Basically, yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. So yep. I, got, I got 100 for the cleric and 50 for the magic user, so I'm assuming that averages to 75. So that's 7 gold and five and 10 silver. So I'll buy two... Uh... Everybody can start with one basic weapon, all the spell components that you need. You have no armor. So plate armor? You have no magic items. Everybody starts with plate armor. Hey, Mikey. Yeah. No. <laughs> my, we my weapon is an 11 foot pole. <laughs> <laughs> you know, in, in case I haven't made it clear before, discreetness might be a pretty good strategy. Well, so, if, so if you're strolling to town with a bunch of weapons and a bunch of armor, I think people are going to know that you're there looking for trouble. Do I want to hire or an axe? Sure, sure. Work. Uh, it's, as a ranger, I'm a fighter, right? Yes. Uh, I'm just going to think of staff. Five, eight, four. Fine. Okay. And I got 13, wait, three, four, eight, nine, ten, twelve. I got 15. So does that mean? Well, that's 15 gold pieces. Excellent. Chris, Chris is rich. I think Chris got uh, 110 gold pieces. Do you need to keep your pants so you, up? That's 11 gold pieces. Yeah, that's 11. Oh. You're 10 percent. Do you need to keep oh, a robe up? I'm sorry, Joel, you said we start with what? A basic weapon? Yeah, we have one, base, one basic weapon for your class type. Do we have any livestock to start? No. Um, Do we have any... Pro okay. Backpack back provisions, anything like that, Joel? Don't. Religious we'll items. Whatever you consider basic survival you have. Adam but not, no, there's nothing magical. How many attack there's, and harnesses? Okay, so you just need a box yourself. If you guys are going to haul a whole bunch of stuff, you're never going to get to Groton in a day. And, All right. And you want to keep moving. Backpack, iron rations for a week. No, no, no iron. You got iron rations for a day. One day. Okay, so that's just food. <laughs> um, hey, Adam, you might want to go on mute when you're... Uh... <laughs> I'm breathing heavily. <laughs> yeah, sorry. Sorry, man. Joe, what do you think the uh, most likely weapon for the dwarf to have would be? A short sword. An, an axe. Over an axe or a hammer? Yeah, axe or hammer. Short, a, a short axe. Maul. Maul. No maul. Maul's an actual, an actual item here. It's taller than the dwarf is. What's the difference between a hammer and a lucerne hammer? I think a lucerne hammer has a pointed back end, where a regular hammer just is a blunt instrument. But I think a lucerne has, it has more hammer. damage. Yeah, it costs seven times as much, I think. Uh, more than that, I think. However, uh, is battle axe? Yeah, it's 70. Wow, you're going to make me get my dungeon master screen now? Battle axe is reasonable. That's five gold. What do you need on there? There's a possibility for you to have. The battle axe. Uh, Page 37, Joel. Thanks. No, the, the dungeon master guide has a, or uh, the screen has a quick reference table for weapons. Yeah, 37. I can't read any of this. There was a time when I could read all this. <laughs> I can't read anything now. Yeah, I, can, I, 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 I can read it nicely from this distance. A short sword is more expensive than a looser hammer. All right. I got a backpack. I got rations for a day, tinderbox, I have a small mirror. You have your spell a, components? Water skin and components. 
What do you wear? Well, Robes. I hope you have a spell book. Yes. Uh, I'm not kidding about that one. You don't have your spell book, you're not going to relearn your spells. Okay, Robes component spell book. That's all. Dwarves get a plus one to what? Constitution and wisdom? No. Constitution and minus one for prison. Minus one. But nothing on wisdom, right? I think Chris might turn into a dwarven cleric. Not a lot. That's not a lot. Oh, that's right. Not a valid it's class. It's AD&D, I forgot. Yeah, only humans. And no, elves. humans and elves and half elves. That's right. But not dwarves. For some reason, there are no dwarven clerics. And what do you, um... And what if half works? They're strength and constitution, but they're minus. Do you guys remember? No, I feel. It should be in there somewhere. Here, you want, you want the book five? Looser and Hammer is okay? Looser and Hammer is. I'm not going to waste. I'm gonna, I'm not, it's actually cheaper than a sword sword. Seven gold pieces? Well, you come from a rich family? How can you afford one of those? Did we have to buy the weapon? Or was sword that, sword is eight. Or is that separate from our, our money? No, you don't have to buy it. Okay. Right All right, I'm ready. Right. If Josh is ready, we can start. <laughs> what do um what do elves get? It's not for abilities and stuff. Uh, I'll look it up and I'll tell you. Bear with me. I'm Maybe I'll just have a sped up. I don't know what sped up is. It also includes Corsica and Corsica. Do that to me. How about, how about a long sword? Elves. For, who? for the ranger. Uh, okay, Adam, for elves, uh, you have a 90% resistance to sleep and charm spells. I have Well, if you took the pre rolled characters and we got these uh, magic items. Swords, <coughs> uh, rather, uh, long sword and short sword, and also with bows. Halbert is one of You get a long, plus one. Right? Yeah. Oh, it's. I'll save it for that. Uh, and that is uh, right, only on two hit. That's not on damage. Ah, oh, that's right. Um, oh, flail? Yeah, uh, flail? You also have a boatload of languages as an elf as part of your long life. Oh, so you speak oh. Elvish, Gnome, Halfling, okay. Goblin. Let me know when you've got that. You've got Hot Wheels, Forkish. Immediately? Have you got that, Adam? Oh, did he freeze up on us? I think he did. It's interesting that in this they actually do he or she can do this. Did you pick an alignment for your character? 99% <laughs> <laughs> Everybody needs an alignment. Do you have an alignment? Yeah. Yeah, I'll be doing for good. That was a tough choice, huh? Adam. Adam is uh, holding still. I think we lost Adam. He disconnected. Maybe he'll reconnect shortly. That's something. Bob is talking all the things for me. Oh, uh, sorry, bud. Oh, yeah. Not good. You like me here today, but... You said neutral good? Unlike those directly opposite them, who are neutral evil, in alignment, creatures of neutral good believe in that there must be some regulation in combination with freedoms if the best is to be brought to the world. The most beneficial conditions for living things in general and intelligent creatures in particular. I'm sure that's very helpful. We don't have a half elf, so maybe we need Chris's character. Oh, you're half elf? I don't know if it's worth making Chris human or half elf. Yeah. Yeah, maybe he wants to do a class and do a party. Hey. So, where do you get the taco tables? Do you remember that one? That's the DMG. No. So, we don't know where their taco is, right? Kind of. Hmm. Which all has it right there? So, um, I got Goblin. Oh, welcome back. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yeah, can you hear us? Yeah, I think. 
Okay, so after Goblin. I, I can hear you. So it's Elvish Gnome Dwarvish Goblin. Uh, Hobgoblin. Yeah, Orcish. Dorkish? Everybody in this room, except Randy. Yeah, Dorkish. I speak Dorkish. You do. And there's <laughs> daily there's basis. One more, yeah, there's Noel. You there's speak Noel. Noel. Yeah. We have two Adams. And you speak Common, Adam. And, oh, Common. Yes, there are two Adams. I connected them to my phone the second time. Because yeah, the connection from the computer was sucky. Yeah, it was pretty staggering. I may be switching back and forth. Okay. Yeah. Hotel interviews suck. Yeah, they do, especially at this time of the night. Adam, is Go. your uh, is your character's yeah. intelligence fifteen or greater? Or should I align with it? It's just a thirteen, so okay. we don't have to worry about that. So the next thing is yep. you get a sixty foot infrared. Pale, 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 or, or indie pale. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is. Yeah. And now jot this one down because Whatever you have pick, to remind you Joel about play. this constantly. I know. Uh, you are a god when it comes to finding secret doors. I'm a good guy, but... You passively find them just by walking past them without okay. even trying. I say I'm a good guy. Um, so you, if you pass within 10 foot of one... He's a good guy. You have a 1 in 6 chance of finding it automatically. So remind Joel yeah. of the become Waffle evil? And if you're actively, then it's 2 in 6. 1 in 6? Uh, 1 in 6 for a passive. Okay, so 1 in... 1... Go ahead. Like that. Well, so, yeah, so one in six is passively, two and two and six actively. That's right. And also, if it's a concealed portal, you have a fifty percent chance of finding it. Okay. You get a plus one to your dexterity. Ooh. But, Jeff, back it off. However, you get minus one to your constitution. Okay. So, X is... Well, be a lot of one. Con is... Marvel neutral. Uh, oh, neutral, but... Okay. And now, here is something... And oh, let me know when you're ready. Sorry. Is it 50% chance to find a concealed door? Yes. Okay. And here's your last... Special ability, and people always, always forget about this. Um, if you are alone, meaning you're more than 90 feet away from the party, and you're not wearing metal armor, you have a chance to surprise somebody just by moving silently, and your chance to surprise them is one out of uh, is a one to four on a d6. So 66% chance of getting surprise. Neutral people. Nice. And check this out. Let's say that there's a door, and you have to walk through the door and then surprise them. You have to open the door, walk through it, and then surprise them. You still get a chance. It's one and two out of six. You'd be chaotic evil. Doesn't mean that you're okay. just running around like a so maniac. Use that to your advantage. Kill it. <laughs> okay. Kill them all. Yeah. What do I have as a level one clear to hit AC town? I'm not gonna take into account weapons. Ten. Like ten. Ten hit ten. Eleven hit nine. Right. Is there a strength bonus at thirteen or no? No. Okay. Missiles are minus five at long range, minus two at medium range. I have no missile. Unless you're gonna buy a sling later on. Um, Where's that going this time? I put it in here. Okay. Put it as the first one. As your base. And then, I'm not dealing with weapon speed adjustment stuff, that's just for me. It's 10 to hit 10? That's for me as a cleric. That's, and Chris is a cleric as well. So Can I have the pickle from? Yeah. Yes, sir. There you go. I have a pixel spell. Oh, nice. Although it's pretty given what my spells are. Uh, what's your uh, hit die as a cleric? B8. Okay. So Chris has 8. And there's no bonus for a 12 constitution, Correct. I assume. Okay. Hmm. Alright, Chris is going to take Cure Light Wounds. Okay. Joel, how long does this trip take? Half a day? You're going to get there about 8 p.m. So most of the day. Yep. So Eight. what is mine to hit? What are you? Plus one. He's a fighter. Does he only get one? I can't remember. One what? One spell? Yeah. Ten. So I don't want to put a ten? 
Yep. Yes. So Thacko for the fire. So roll twenty to hit a. You have minus a zero. Is slower than his does. Yeah. And the Thacko for a ranger is the same as a fighter. Right? Yes. Okay. So that's a ten as well. What about my seventeen strength? What does that do? Ooh. That makes you strong. Plus you one, plus two. Plus one to hit, plus two damage. Where are those pluses? I don't know the power you remember that. Abilities. Yeah. <coughs> is broken. First pages. Page nine. There you go. I didn't see anything about rangers being able to do a will. That's later edition. That's the other edition. Yeah. Long sword. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, are there? Uh, I gotta look at the bonuses still too. One d eight, one d twelve. So I get. I got 16 strength, 16 dex, and a 14 con and whiz. I know the wisdom won't get me anything, but does any of those abilities get me anything else? What was the strength? So strength is 16. Uh, plus dex zero. Is 17. Plus zero to hit, plus one damage for strength. So plus one hit, plus one damage. No, plus, plus zero hit, plus one damage. Oh, dex. this is just plus one damage. Yep, dex of 17 gives you minus three on your AC. That's, that's good. Ooh, that's fantastic. You said 17, yeah. right? 17 on dex, yeah. What was your con? Your con? Uh, 14. Yeah, you got nothing for that. What about a 15, okay. what, 15 strength? 15 strength, I think, gives you. It, did, it was. Nothing. I got 16. Oh, oh, sorry. Nothing for 15 strength? Wow. And what about 15 intelligence? Your fighters What's take a long time to advance along. Oh, no, I'll look it up later. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, a lot of experience points. <laughs> Any pluses for 14 wisdom? No. And nothing for 14 dex? Nope. My guy is like... Average. Just completely average. I'm pretty close. <laughs> so no pluses for anything for my guy. Wow. I got like that. Oh, what about Chris? Uh, what about a 16 wisdom? What does that do for him? Really? 15 strength is nothing. Nothing. God. <laughs> 16 wisdom? Yeah. As a clear, it yes. gives him one additional second level spell. Plus one second level. What's his uh, spell failure? Uh, zero. Oh, I'm sorry. Let me clarify that. Mm -hmm. You said a 15? He's a 16. He's a 16. All right, because I'm, I'm rereading this. Note that these spells are only uh, the bonus spells are cumulative. So a cleric with a 14 wisdom entitled to two first level spell bonus spells. Oh. Well, with 15 wisdom has two first level and one second level. So my 17 wisdom grants me two bonus spells. Okay, so I get three cleric spells. Yeah. That's much more better. So my hit points are a d10 for a fighter. Yes. Mm -hmm. Plus my constitution uh, bonus of plus three. I have 13 hit points. I'm taking a cure light. Yep. Lucky number 13. I don't remember doing that. Man. That's nice. Put your alignment. Just a And I'm going to purify uh, light. Let me know what you want Chris to take, aside from the cure light ones. Um, purify food and drink. Just be safe. Sure, I guess. And then blessed, I guess, yeah. But that's combat, but I don't think we're going to do that. Well, you never know. Uh, what's a non-combat application that might be easier, might be better? Command. Tell me what to do. Nothing else in there that looks interesting? <laughs> there's only 12. Oh, there's only 12? Seriously? I thought I always thought there was more. No, that's the magic user side. We could detect magic or evil if we're doing forensics. Magic news or take that. We'll do the detect magic if we're gonna investigate crimes and things. I guess so. Did you see what I forwarded you from Jeff here? Hmm? Did you see what I forwarded you from Jeff? Somebody just shelf him. Shelf him. Pronounce it correctly, please. So we're not, uh, for armor and weapons, we're not, we're just coming with a weapon. We have clothes on our back, and that's it, right guys? Yep. All right. And uh, for the fighter types, do they get a bow or just a sword, and we leave it at that, and they'll have to buy whatever just a, they want? Just a sword. Okay. Sounds good. 
Uh, what about saving throws? Do we know what the saving throws are for various They're not on the classes? sheets either. That's DMG. Yeah, but they're not on the sheets to write in. No. So I think we can just look it up if we need it. Yeah, we can look them up. Well, we jot them down now. We don't have to look them up later. If we need them. That's a good point. Um, my character is a dwarven fighter. Joshua, what's yours? I'm a half elf cleric magic user. Chris is going to be a human cleric. And I am a human uh, ranger. Josh, they're on page 79 of your dungeon master guide. Yes. If you I, have that, I'm sure I you. That Adam is an elven ranger, I think. That's correct, yes. Oh, he's one of them. And Mike, what are you? I'm a elf, elven rogue. Nice. What's a rogue? So, just okay. so we understand, you guys at this point should have your ability scores and your hit points. Uh, maybe you give your name of your character uh, a refresher on what class and your ability scores and your hit points. And then I think we'll have a good sense of what the characters are like. I am Darter, a dwarf fighter. Oh, God, you're going to pick a name. Yeah, it's, it's what's, his, uh, what's his alignment? He's neutral evil. Oh, we got an evil guy in there? What's your what hit points? My name 13 hit points because his constitution is so high. Okay. Uh, Josh? I have not determined the name yet. He is neutral good. I'm thinking unseen servant for my magic user stuff. Smart. He's, He's a magic user that. cleric. Yes. What is, what is Darger's ability scores? Darger has 17 strength, 14 intelligence, 14 wisdom, 15 dex, 17 constitution, and 12 charisma. I and that charisma is only 12 because I have a minus one. My god, your charisma is better than mine. A half belt has worse charisma than a dwarf. Oh I'm my. a good looking dwarf. Oh my god. You are like a genetic, genetically Freak. superior member of your race. That's incredible. Are you on steroids? What's I might have about? a little help going way back. That's incredible. Wow. I feel so inferior. I wouldn't say that because elves are dirty. Right. But. Hey. <laughs> hey now. I resemble that remark. So you're a dwarf. Adam Ripsick equals dwarf. Without the facial hair. <laughs> That's right. Passable facial hair. How did you not buy a six pack for your own, dude? <laughs> did you just have a good dinner, Adam? Yeah, it was alright. I got uh, PF Chanks. Oh, never been there. You know, I, I, I'd much it? rather have, you know, Chinese food from, uh, you know, the, the, most, the Chinese food better. place table, you know, Mean Moon. Golden Walk, Golden Palace, Palace Moon. Come on, some young guy. Got it. <laughs> One tickle blow. That, yep. By the way, guys, you can refer to me as veteran, uh, Darter. Adam, by the way, Bob brought what could be one of the worst desserts ever. No much. It's, it's a massive container of, oh, dark, really? of dark chocolate with almonds embedded in it. It's like a dark chocolate pizza with almonds oh. in it. Broken up into all bite-sized pieces. Oh. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's yeah, going to be here for like weeks. Not there, actually. I kind of was hoping... That could be dangerous. I thought that you were going to be there, man. I brought a... Maybe a little too much pizza. It's bark. <laughs> yeah, when I'm not there, it definitely affects the consumption rate. Maybe. Nonsense. Not for the beer tonight yet. So, uh, it's pretty average. Okay, so my character is uh, Felric. He is a human ranger. Uh, he is somewhat eccentric because he was raised by wolves in the wild, thus his ranger abilities. Um, he is actually pretty mediocre in everything. He's got 15s for strength and intelligence. He's got a 14 wisdom, a 12 dexterity, a 14 constitution, and 11 charisma. They're all sort of on the high end of average, but uh, none of them are large enough to get any bonuses whatsoever. He is uh, a ranger, so he is neutral good. He's got a long sword that he believes his father once had, but he's not sure. He found it in the woods, and he, he has a irrational attachment to it. 
And what's his hit points? Oh, his hit points, because he rolls the 2d8 maxed out, it's going to be 16 hit points. Okay. Adam, are you ready? Adam, are you there? And it's like... Uh, I don't have a name yet. And I didn't think this yeah, was Can you hear me? Yes. Yep. It's real twitchy. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't have a name yet either. Until I tried to but I'm an Elden Ranger off the counter. with uh, 16 strength, 17 dex, 14 con, 14 whiz, 13 int, and 10 charisma. Um, I also have 16 hit points. Um, oh, and I'm going to be... Oh, no. I think I No, I think I control. I'll be neutral good. I'm going to be an elf. What's your weapon of choice? Can I do that as an elf? That's a good point. Neutral good, yeah. Well, that's the thing. Do I... Am I stuck with a long bow? A, a long sword? Or can I do a, a bow as a ranger? Elven ranger? I think you gotta start with a long sword. You gotta a save. Up, you gotta save bow. up to buy your bow. A composite bow. What? Looks like we're saving up to buy our other weapons. You only have a sword or a melee weapon. Okay. You guys are level well, zero, so sword. level yes. level one. Oh, we're level zero, not level one. <laughs> you're you're level one. You Half. you went to an adventure school for a week. <laughs> This is the end of the sword you hold. Yeah. <laughs> oh Do I have the t-shirt that says, I went to adventure school and all I got was this lousy long sword? <laughs> Mike, is your guy all done? I'm all ready. What's his name and, uh, and his race? So, and... My character's name is Eldane. He is uh, an elf rogue. Oh, right. no. That's perfect. Because I treat yeah, him as uh, this name. Max hit points of six. And his name is Eldane. Hey, is that good? Is that good, Jeff? Are you happy that I just actually came up with a name, or <laughs> that is perfect for me? We, we we wanted to name him Mike, actually. Yeah, no, no, no. I'm not giving you guys any more opportunities to name any of my characters. <laughs> there was nothing wrong with me. Now on going forward, there was nothing wrong with Rudy. What does there he carry with him? Nothing wrong with Rudy, but we'll just uh, yeah. Anyway, so um, he carries a dagger. He, he carries he carries a dagger. Yep, for his for his weapon. Uh, he has okay. a strength of thirteen, a dex of seventeen, a con of fourteen, an int of twelve, a whiz of fifteen, and a charisma of fourteen. Good. Not bad. And what alignment did you select? Uh, neutral, true neutral. Oh baby. Do you have uh, something for Chris to put together? Uh, I do. Uh, although Chris may choose differently, I rolled for him. Okay. Uh, Chris is not here, so I had to roll a character on his behalf. That's Chris, he just told me he wanted to be a cleric. This is so he bad. is a devout uh, priest uh, whose name for the moment is John Doe. And uh, he, Chris Doe. he's not exactly a, a strong fella. He's got a strength of 13, an intelligence of 10. Oh. But his wisdom is clearly his strongest asset. He has a wisdom mm -hmm. of 16. Okay. His dexterity is 10. Well, his constitution is 12. And his charisma is oh, 10 right, as well. Huh? And uh, John Doe has 8 hit points. And what is his race? Uh, he will be human. And what is his alignment? His alignment... I don't know how Chris wants to play it. But I'm going to go with... Uh, Neutral evil. He'll be good. Neutral evil. He wanted to be the healer. That implies good. I agree. Maybe lawful good. Maybe not all Oh, lawful yeah, he's good. strict. I think he'd be strict. Wow, right? it's going to mess things up. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give him He's going to put some limitations on you guys. I'll so. call him I'll call him neutral good. You have to now. pull those lenient tricks. So, yeah, I know. <laughs> Step into this room, please. I, I can't make that decision for Chris, so we'll go neutral good because that gives him flexibility for now. All right, so everybody's got some neutral in them. Mm -hmm. that's, that's not not too committal here. Yeah, we're nice and big. <laughs> Did we have you, an evil? Did you go evil? Neutral okay. All right, Josh, you have no name for your character? Um, give, give, me, give me ten more. Give me like a minute. What, what's your race? Half elf. Half elf. How many hit points do you have? Six. Okay. Okay. Half elf ranger. Click magic user. He's incredibly squishy, but incredibly useful. 
Yeah, I'm the utility guy. What kind of weapon is uh, uh, Chris carrying around right now? He is no. going to. He uh, when he left his holy order, Magic. they gave him a yeah. pouch with Magic. beans, Magic. and they gave him oh. the uh, the magical, or the rather the divine artifact of their order, which is a rusty mace. <laughs> they worshipped it for years. They never touched it. Part of the rules were that you're not supposed to touch this divine thing. But they believe. <laughs> They call John Doe the chosen one. There's a plus two tetanus to reach your time. <laughs> and he walks around with this mace. It's a very small <laughs> group of like monks that live in a hillside that don't have a lot of interaction with people. What, uh, now, at least it may what weapons talking about a spray can? Garter have. <laughs> <laughs> a looser uh, hair. I just want to make sure. Uh, no, this would be a long uh, metallic shaft with a circle at one end with pointy spikes made of iron. That do look kind of rusty, and they're sort of heavy. Don't hurt yourself. And he's got a worn leather loop around his brown robe that he keeps it in the belt. Okay. I've got a I've got a name for my character. My elven ranger will be named Efron. Oh, thank God! Which translated into the common tongue means lone hunter. Which then turned into the Spanish tongue means Legolas. No. Okay. So Efron, Eldan, Felric. Eh, not, not too much alike. We have a bit of quite a bit of elf in the party, don't we? We do, and one dwarf. I don't like to be. I don't like you to remind me of that. There's two elves. Half elves I can handle. Okay, you brother. know what? I no wonder why the dwarf is evil. <laughs> Watch it. Hey, it looks like Chris has joined us. Oh, now I can let him roll his stats if he wants to. Actually, send him a picture. The, the, dwarf, the dwarf isn't evil, he's just pissed off at having to hang around with all these elves. <laughs> Welcome, Chris. Bob is finished all your characters. Why is everybody so tall? Why does Chris have that little microphone in his picture? Because Chris is muted. I'll send him his character via text. He doesn't have too much to him right now. Chris, can you hear us okay? Now is uh, Mike frozen? I don't know. <laughs> well, he, he is on mute, so oh, there's there. He's not on mute anymore. Chris, can you hear us? What's the damage on base? 1d6? I think so. How do I remember all this stuff? <laughs> Was it that important to be in the third and fourth grade? <laughs> <laughs> it depends what kind of base. Yes, you had to discover girls. Footman's yet. is two to seven. Oh, he's gonna get a footman's. A uh, horseman's is one to six. He's gotta get a footman's. He's got a horse. And then it's one to six at large. I'm gonna charge. be the uh, setak. I'm gonna call myself setak more. That's way too hard. You don't forget to get a whisper bump. That's uh, yeah, it's fine. Twilight Imperium. Oh. oh. <laughs> Why does it sound like DS9? Because it could be Kardashian. Or uh, Dominion. Oh, I'm going to go with Dukat. I like that he was he was a fun character. One of the best. Not as good as Garrick, but Dukat will do. Garrick was probably in the top five for greatest characters of all time in the <clears throat> Star Trek lore. Are we ready to play? You haven't started Garrick. playing yet? Well, we're making our characters. Garrick? So we can start making characters like Garrick. We can start talking about Hey, uh, LD, oh, no, what are your thieving uh, ability percentages Ooh. right now? Darmar? Uh, Pickpockets 40, Open Locks 25, Shenagra. Find Remove Traps 20, oh, Move Silently 20, Hide and Shadows. Well, I also have the elf thing with the uh, Move Silently, so. Yeah, don't forget uh, about that. Yeah. Uh, I can hide in shadows, 20, hear noise, 15, climb walls, 85. Nice. I mean, I'm assuming we're all level 1, right? So Yeah. 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 That's pretty much it. And you added the Elven bonus to the um, base stat? I, I had one bonus and one that had to subtract, so. Nice. All right, all right, so all of our characters are made. Yeah, well, okay, one more thing from my roster. Tell me uh, what spells you have. Mm -hmm. I have none. Okay, my magic user spell is Unseen Servant. I have, I, okay. 
Good choice. And I get three level one cleric spells, so I have to cure light wounds, yeah. command, and light. Okay. Are you sure you want to take cure light wounds, cure light wounds, cure light wounds? <laughs> and what does uh, Chris have? Well, uh, John Doe, Chris, can you hear me? Can you speak? You cannot speak. <laughs> Uh, is that by choice? Or are you having technical uh, yes to technical technical difficulties? Sore mouth. Yes, technical difficulties. <laughs> I'm very sorry. All right, brother. Well, text fast. Here's the deal, Chris. You can always uh, send a chat message. Oh, I see he just sent one just now. Uh, let me see if I can open that up and see what he had to say. If I click on this. Oh, son of a gun. Oh, there it yeah. is. Crappy new computer with no audio. Sorry, brother. Um, you had 12 choices for spells, Chris. Most of them did not seem that useful. You could uh, cure light nice. wounds. Uh, you could read, uh, rather, detect magic. Well, 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 well. Purify food and water. You could command one person to like fall asleep for uh, a couple of minutes, and they would just collapse to the ground. You could cast bless. I don't know if there was much more. Purify food and water. Yeah. Protection from evil. Detect magic, detect evil, mm. sanctuary. Sanctuary allows you to walk around and nobody can attack you, but you can't attack anybody either. But you can cast healing spells. So I put you down for cure light, one cure light wounds. You get three spells because you're a very wise person. You get two bonus spells. So do you have any preferences of those other? Command one person, detect magic, and cure light wounds. There you go. Those are your spells. So which one do you take? Sorry? So he's taking one Cure Light Wounds, one Command, and one Detect Magic. And just to refresh your memory, Chris, uh, once per day you are permitted to get a new set of spells from anything from that list, of that list of 12, and you have to engage in devout prayer for, is it eight hours? Is it four hours? Who remembers how long you have to pray for? Uh, that's up to our DM. Ah. What did the guide say? Meteorologists predict records shattering yes. snowfall coming soon. Yes. You heard what happened in Arizona today, right? No. It's like the most rain they've gotten in more than 100 years. Yep. John just said Calgary already had snow. Yeah, it was snowing in Calgary today. <laughs> Mike, it was snowing in Calgary today. It's snow apocalypse, baby. Nice and warm down here. Hey, Mike, if I told you from no you. pallets delivered to my garage <laughs> next Monday. <laughs> All right, are we ready here? I was born what? ready. What do you think? How does this damage thing work again? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jeff. That was just the. Uh... Uh, Chris, you have eight hit points as a cleric, and uh, your ability to attack in combat is almost as good as a fighter's. And because your wisdom is greater than 15, Chris, you will get a 10% bonus on experience. Oh, so do I. I. I imagine you clerics have a holy symbol yes. on you. Yes. Holy moly symbol. Oh, Chris, you also have to choose what your religion is. I gave you neutral good. Your alignment. As you, or rather, your alignment. What? <laughs> Next time I'll log on to that's I'll get it in a minute. I don't know what that means. <laughs> Holy shit, <Bakken>. All right. <laughs> you have to think about who your god is, Chris. Uh, but you also, more specifically, have to think about your alignment. I gave you neutral good, but you can change that. If you want to be the goody two shoes lawful good, following all the rules. That's not going to work good for us, but you can do that. But you can do it. That's for sure. So I think about my game for a reason. Yeah, think about uh, you can. Okay, if I, Chris, it's okay if you choose me as your god. I'm okay with that. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. 
All right, what are we waiting on here? I think our character creation is good. Yes. Okay. I went with Ducat for name. Ducat. Ducat. Yeah, you, okay. Uh, do you want to say any of your background on your character at all? Those of you who just have a name right now? Joel wants to know what it looks like. No, you, you're, you're, you're lucky you got a name out of me. <laughs> yeah. Think I, of hindrance. Did everybody read the background that I sent to you? Yes. So, I guilted you, them into it for you. Restenford is a pretty good-sized uh, city. Do you want to it, give a little background for the people listening who, who aren't familiar with it? Even if it's quick sure, or okay. Or a refresher for the rest of us. Well, you're a, group of, you're a small group that's been called together by a sorcerer in the town of Restenford named uh, Peltar. Peltar called you together to uh, tell you that the Baron Baron Grellis of Rustenford, which is where you are, has been found murdered last night. Right now it is Monday morning. Uh, it, I sent you the I sent you the background to uh, read. I can go over that really quickly though, just to uh, refresh it for you and the, to share it with anybody who's listening. Uh, Baron, and it should match what, what was emailed to you. Baron Grellis of Restenford is dead. All clues point to Garotten, a small town about 18 miles to the south of Restenford. The party has been secretly contacted in Restenford by the sorcerer Peltar to find out who murdered the Baron and to bring the murderer to justice. Peltar really wants to continue his researches in peace, but the death of the Baron threatens the stability of the whole region. The Baron was found strangled at 8 a.m. Monday morning. His bedroom was locked from the inside. No furniture or other objects were overturned or broken. However, three clues to the murderer was found in the room. First, a small red ruby, with a value of about 50 gold pieces, was located near the body. Second, a golden loot string was found under the bed. Third, a red leather button was found in the Baron's hand. Restenford Castle has been sealed to outsiders and so the Baron's wife and daughter recover from the shock. The effect to speak with dead gives no clues, and all attempts to raise the Baron met with failure. However, Peltar has acquired the following information. An old man with long white hair, wearing a blue robe with the symbol of three barracuda on it, ate at the Restenford Inn. This symbol is known to represent one of the major sea deities worshipped on Lendor Isle which is the island that, that you and the kingdom is on. Okay. Osprum, goddess of the seas and water travel. <laughs> a temple to this deity is located in Garotten. The old man displayed a beautiful golden holy symbol, a small whale. The eyes of the whale were red rubies. Also, a man in traveling clothes appeared at the local tavern where he had a few drinks and played the lute for the people in the tavern. He stayed a few hours and then left. The loot had unusual golden strings. Also, a man came into town to buy a few barrels of beer and had them shipped to his inn in Garotten. He wore a distinctive red vest with ornate red buttons. When shown the button found in the Baron's room, the wine merchant identified it as resembling the ones on the innkeeper's vest. The guard at the south gate of Restenford, whose road leads to Garotten, remembered each of the three men. They arrived one after another, about an hour apart, between 7 p.m. and 9 p.m. Sunday night. None of these men were seen to leave the Restenford, but a later search of the town did not find them. Peltar the sorcerer thinks he knows them. The first is Harper, the high priest of the church of Osprem and Garotten. The second is Balmaro, a theater owner in Garotten. The third seems to be Abraham, the town's innkeeper. The party knows that Garotten does not enjoy a good reputation. Dark rumors suggest that Garotten is the headquarters for assassins who operate right under the nose of the town's mayor. There is no proof that such a guild exists, but a common phrase as much in the area is, if you want someone killed, go to Garotten. It is up to the party to find out who killed the Baron and why, and to bring the guilty party to the rest and third if possible. So that brings the, the six of you together who are hastily gathered you each have some kind of connection to Peltar. The connection and relationship is not important, not for this adventure. It's, it's either direct or indirect. Peltar, help. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he, 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 he just went over the facts with you and wants to know if you have any questions. 
Do you know what, what I need you to do? Uh, and can are, you do it? I, I think I speak for all of us when I say we're interested, but what do we get out of this? Why would we do this? What do you mean what we get out of this? The entire forest would burn if there was war. We keep the forest... There was there. no comment of war. Peltar, you've helped me in the past. I will help you now. It seems you clear that if we want to keep the animals safe and the creatures that live within these woods, we must assist. Now, Pel Peltar, I'm not, I'm not the Baron. I'm not the mayor of this town. I'm just one of the key advisors, but I know that you were all given a lot of uh, education and a lot of resources to to get to where you are right now. You wanted this this opportunity. Oh. If you change your mind, I can find another magic user or fighter, I'm sure. And, and you can go back to um, tilling the soil and, and growing growing your cucumbers. Mm. Soil. What do you do with those cucumbers? So, so you guys done a uh, search of Rustin Ford Castle? Is there a chance that the is there is there a chance you could have missed anything, or that evidence is still in there? there like we said, the the room was locked. Uh, the, the, it was locked from the inside. It's a mystery. Who has a key for that room? The Baron. He is he is the only uh, the, the only boss. Wait, his light doesn't have a key. What about the cleaning? He's the Baron. He's the Baron. Is so. he in the room with him? Is, is he married? The the uh, wife. He has a wife and a daughter. They're both in shock. They can't be. They. I talk to them. I trust them. The, the Baron and and the wife are inseparable, and, and immensely loyal to each other. She is in no way any kind of a suspect. You said inseparable. Is it, is I'm not a, sure if I like this guy, but was there a, a window or a balcony? Or was this a floor of the, the mansion? Or yeah, there, I mean, there's a window, and uh, you know, you know, unless you're really dumb, that's probably the way that the killer got in. But I have no way of knowing for sure. Second floor, third floor, eighteenth floor. I mean, the, I don't see what why it's important how he got in here. The fact is that he got in here. We need to find out who it is. What do you make of the fact that powerful magics? could not raise him from the dead, nor that he could be spoken to. Do you feel that this could be the uh, Mumbo actions Mumbo. of a powerful sorcerer? Well, rival, well, I mean, uh, un unless you've um, skipped all your cleric classes, you would know that raise the dead is not 100% effective. I'm not no, it's not but We tried, that? and, and uh, we failed. But you speaking with the dead as well, I thought that... That's, that's failed as well. He, he does not have any useful information oh. to give us. Oh, he apparently he, he didn't see who murdered him. So it was probably a suicide. <laughs> Alright, there's a button in a room that came out we, of the girl's navel and the button was folded. Never mind. I uh, yeah, I, I don't know why he was killed, but it wouldn't surprise me if the assassins had something to do with it. I mean, they, they've been killing people on this island for the, for the last two years. Mm -hmm. Never have they gone after somebody as big and as important as the Baron. Would he, was, does he have any enemies in that city? Um, or any enemies in general who would have wanted Well, him? I mean, I don't know I don't know who he was friends with, who he, who he wasn't. Uh, Garotten's just another city. The, the Baron doesn't really have jurisdiction over him. But he had, he had no rival enemies, per se. Uh, I mean, Were there contested lands? I mean, not, not that I know of. I'm, I'm sure he did. What of these guests that arrived between seven and night, the nine the night before? Are they still on the premises? Well, we can't find them. But we've looked and we can't find them in town anywhere, so I don't think they're here anymore. I, I don't know where they went. We know we saw them leave, but but they're not here. That that we do know. I see. Has anyone yeah, made the connection between the items awesome. found in the room? Nobody knows. Awesome. This isn't common knowledge. The town doesn't even know the Baron's dead yet. You... You are the first people outside of myself, the Baron's close advisors and his family that knows about this. And, and it's important that we that people don't know because we... I just we, tweeted it. <laughs> <laughs> you spoke we, to the birds and you want to keep quiet? Off off of we don't want to create a panic. We don't, we don't want a revolution and, and, and his position to be overthrown. 
But I'm sure he's got enemies. I'm sure he's got po let's, poli let's, political let's go to here. competitors. Let's the investigation. But do you understand the Baroness and saying, his daughter? If that is true, we must exercise a tremendous amount of subtlety. Of if the wor if the world were to know of his death, we could create rioting in the streets. When 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 will there will there, is there any official announcement planned? Uh, when the uh, Baron's wife and the daughter have gathered their wits, that could be another day or two. Very well. Elf, you've been quiet. Uh, the ranger I, looks at uh, Mike, Mike's character, whose name is Eldane. Yes. The elven, uh, the elf that seems to stick to the shadows. You've not said a thing. Have you any thoughts? Well, I, I find it interesting that we seem to keep thinking that there's one person when there seems to be evidence of three individuals. So are we saying that the ruby, let, let, let's say, for example, the guy with the loot is, 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 is the killer. Did the guy with the pendant with the ruby eyes and the whale and the merchant with the buttons, did, you know, did they get killed too? Could there be possibly two other murders? Mm -hmm. Certainly they would not be foolish enough to leave evidence at the scene. And then escape. Well, Perhaps the evidence was planted that they weren't the killers. What if they were all the same person? Ooh, maybe they were a doppelganger. What if C A no, A no, T no. really smells a dog? I, I will tell you the town's guard has done a very thorough search of the of the city, and there are no other dead bodies, or under you know, in, in this town oh, they're, anywhere. They're a doppelganger. The guard is it the same guard who saw all three arrive and leave? The guards saw them arrive, did not see them leave. Nobody saw them leave. Nobody We're saw them leave. The castle. There's I nobody know. in this castle. We have magical ways of determining that. We know who's in this castle. You might want to go back on mute, Adam. I think you got to mute that. <laughs> Chips are killer. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. Okay. Well, I, well, my recommendation would be to go seek out the Assassin's Guild that I don't know for sure exists, but that's what the word is. In I, I, I don't know who else would have either the audacity or the skill to sneak in and, and murder the Baron. All right, I, I, I would join you myself. I've got other things to do in this town. I've got to console the Baroness. I've got to provide my, you know, my advice, and I've got my own magical studies to do, to keep up with. <laughs> do, you want, do you want the job, or do I need to... Uh, Find another group of group of braver people. I enjoy solving mysteries. I'll lend my sword to this cause. Very well. Provide us some rations to the road, and we'll be going. There will be uh, six horses with uh, two days of supplies down there waiting for you, and another pouch with five gold pieces in each for each of the six of you. That should provide you with uh, enough um, enough. Re to, Enough to buy the resources that you need in Groton, if you're lucky. It's it's not a thriving metropolis, but it's a pretty well-stocked city, or stock, well-stocked village. Thank you, they're, it, As you know, they're very famous for their um, their fishing nets. Somehow down, they, they make fishing nets that people from all over the island go. That, not that that's important, but... They are an exciting people indeed. Absolutely. Are, are fishing nets the fantasy equivalent of concrete shoes? <laughs> do you think the people of Gilder or Flora could have anything to do with this? <laughs> nobody from Gilder could have known what we have done yet, and nobody from Flora is, has uh, heard of our arrival. I will tell you, we must move quickly because winter is coming. All right, let's go. I'll move along, Joel. We go down and get on the horses. Hey, everybody, yeah, okay. put the plus five gold pieces in your purses. Woohoo! I want the twelve. Okay, you're so the uh, so Peltar finds a place for you to spend the night because you you certainly can't. It's nighttime and you certainly can't leave in the middle of the night. You have to leave at first the first dawn. Uh, Groton is 18 miles away to the south. It, if you start off first thing in the morning, you should get down there. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, we can. You should get down there early yes. evening. All right. Jesus, crud almighty. All right, so we get our night's rest. You get your night's rest. Set out first light. 
Well, your first night, and the it's a very smooth ride. You you ride along the along the roads. You see an occasional traveler. It's it's pretty safe. Uh, there, there's the, always the usual risk of thieves and and, the, and robbers. But in a party of, of yours, of six people riding six fine horses like you are, it's, you're, you're not a group of people most people want to mess with. And Amen. The weather's nice. Uh, the r- ride's steady. You arrive at the outer edges of Groton around 8 p.m. Well, I don't want to walk. Yeah. The outer edge being the north, south. Guys, roll 20. Joel has a map. You're coming from the north. So here? Um, there, yeah. October 1st. I can't get roll 20 to load. Did you stay? It took me a couple tries to. Take a load off. What happened? You, 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 you fell off your horse. It was embarrassing. Um, guys, we're coming in uh, from the top. Of, once you get low to the top of the map, underneath the O of Garretton. North by northeast. That's the road we're coming down, right, Joel? Right. Uh, you can ping, right click, and uh, think of pings. Joel has to ping that one. Or no, you can uh, hold down the button. Is it the primary button? Hold it down? Yeah, there you go. Can you guys see that? No. I can't get there yet, so don't worry about it. I can right. see the thing. I got the right. Now, Mike, you're still trying to get into Roll20, right? Yeah, I, it's been trying to load for the entire time that I've been on with you guys. You're not missing a whole lot, Mike. It's it's a map of a village with about 25 buildings. They're all numbered. Uh, there's okay. just a couple roads. There, there's nothing terribly sophisticated there. They're alongside a river. A few of the buildings are bigger than the others, and a few of the buildings are along... Uh, it's actually a lake. Oh, well, a lake. It's a river... Oh, and there's one building that seems to be on the top of a hill. The map is topographical, so you can sense that it seems to be high up. That's number one. All right, well, we come into building number 13 first, Joel. Oh, and by the way, I just noticed that in Chris's chat, well, I didn't just notice, but I was grinning at it. Uh, he has chosen his holy symbol, which is the star from the movie Krull, and uh, his Thanks. religion will be Jehovah. Thanks, no, uh, I will. I would recommend that you assign somebody in your party to keep a um, a roster of the people that you run into. You're going to run into a lot of people. It's a town uh, that I'm ready. I got my tablet ready. This is a town that's probably got about 150 people, and about half of them are detailed in this book I'm in out. some capacity. I'm out. <laughs> wow. sure uh, some of them will be important. Some of them won't. I can't believe Gilder has that many people. <laughs> Gilder, Gilder is a rival nation, I guess, in Princess Bride. Oh, that's the reference. Nice. Sorry. All right, so Joel, we arrive at number thirteen. Well, number thirteen is a twenty by twenty building. It's the first building that we what, see as we a, enter the town. Or a slightly there? smaller frame house behind it. Uh, and by the way, it's dark. Was there any guards walking into the town, or is the town guarded at all, or is it? Uh, Peltar told you that there is a guard, uh, a guard watch that goes through the town, but you know, I mean you don't see them. You can make out it's it is light enough that uh, building number one is a castle, and that and that's easily the biggest uh, building in in the town. It's All the other towns are 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 pretty much little huts, little little houses. So that this uh, particular building that you're standing in front of has. Um, Two barbed windows and one iron reinforced door. Nice. And uh, four barred windows along the street side. So my character immediately moves into the shadows. Uh, he has 60 feet of 90 vision anyway, so he's going to move into the shadows, use those for his advantage. Okay. I'm going to light as many lights as I can so you can see him easily. Yeah. And as you get close to the house, you hear a voice from inside say, Who's out there? We're just just travelers looking what? for a place to spend the night. Are you looking for the inn? Yes. Are you are you familiar? With, have you ever been there before? We've never been to this town before. What's your name? My name is Ducat. Go to the inn and ask for Abraham. He's the innkeeper. That's the only inn in town. What was your name? My name's Lydia. What you wearing? Are you, what are you wearing? <laughs> what What do you do around here? She's talking for, from inside her house. Do you have any tattoos? Well, your, your your house is relatively well fortified. Are you safe in there? Or is there you? 
Don't worry about me, young man. Just if you want, if you find Abraham, uh, yeah, he'll he'll provide you food, and, and he he may have a room for the night. It, How far? Just keep just keep going down this road, and you you'll find a lot that's uh, surrounded by a fence with a couple buildings. It, it'll be well lit. You'll hear a lot of activity in there. You can't miss it. Uh, my note for this is Lydia gave us directions to the inn, lives in a well-fortified house, suggested talking with Abraham at the inn. Number 13. 13. Yep, I got it. Number 13. Nice job. Man. Uh, by the way, Adam? Take water. Mm -hmm. uh, you have a couple of other quick, quick skills as a ranger that I forgot to mention. Uh, you surprise opponents 50% of the time, and you yourselves are only surprised one out of six times. Congratulations, Josh. You got the first experience points of the night. I don't get the last nothing. This is um, one thing I wish you guys would do, bro. <laughs> Sorry. You can also track creatures. There's a whole chart for tracking creatures, but usually base chance is 65% of the time. Right, and it's 90% outdoors. And, right. last, and last but not least, against giant creatures, right now you get a plus one to damage and to hit. And every level that you increase, that increases by one. Well, to giants or giant sized now creatures? Th there aren't too many buildings in here that are going to require any kind of Bugbears, knowledge of the layout or mapping. Rolls, islands, I'm going to leave it up to you guys boulders, to orcs, do it if you want to do it. Alright, um, as I'll, we pass I'll, number 13 there on the other side of the street, looks like there's a field. Or an unlabeled house. Um, yeah, that's just a just a little um, a little shed. You don't know who it belongs to. Yeah. Okay. There, there's nothing there. It's it's obviously uh, unimportant. Okay. Or is it? So, so it's not the sort of place where uh, fugitives from the law might be hiding if we were to look inside the shed right now. Well, I don't know. You could check if you want. Uh, I think Elric will use some stealth because he doesn't want Lydia or whoever owns the shed to get angry at him. But he might just sneak up to the door. And uh, maybe with the help of the elf who hides in the shadows, uh, look inside. He's an angry little elf. Uh, as an elf, he should have improvision or something, so he should be able to... I do. I have, I have improvision. I can move through the shadows and... Well, just see in the dark what's in there. Is, right, that I, light, is that low light vision? <laughs> Actually, it's, it's darkness. Ooh, it's heat vision. Not, long light. Not like you commoners. <laughs> yeah, Chris, you're human. You don't have that. Am I human? Uh, okay, good. You could choose another race if you want, but you, if to be a cleric, you could either be elf, half elf, or human. No, I'm good. And, oh, yeah, Chris, you still get to roll another character. Because we each have to make two characters in case the first one dies. Yeah, none of us did that, so don't worry about it. Well, we have number... number <laughs> want to check out number 14? Or no, what's inside the shed? We're looking at what's inside the shed first. Joel? Yeah. Well, you peek inside the shed. It's it's obviously empty and, and, and abandoned. I mean, it, it may have held some some seed at one time. You, you see a few empty bags. Should we want to spend the night here? I do not want to spend time in a shed. If we are going to investigate, we need to be where people are. I suggest this be right. And you, you now easily hear coming up the road from the south uh, a couple people. Uh, it, before you know it, you see three guards, not running but moving pretty quickly toward you. And and they've you know, they've got weapons. They, they're they've got armor. You know, they're clearly a little more prepared for. A fight than you are. And they say, Halt, tell us your business. Elric raises his hand, making sure that it's very clear that it's nowhere near his longsword. He says, I am Elric. Elric. Well met. I am here to visit and spend the night. Well, you're, you're getting into town pretty late. Uncle, are, you, are you looking for Abraham's Inn? We are. Do you know where it is? This does not seem like Abraham's Inn. <laughs> Who are you here to visit? Passing, we're passing through on our way down from Garrett from uh, what was it first time? Breath, breath, breath. <laughs> breath of Do you want to jot it down in your notes? <laughs> I, I have a different. It's a different tab. Ah, go to the tab. Oh. 
We're from Restingford. 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 Yeah, we, we okay. left, we're the first resting for first thing this morning. You know, it's a long trip. We just got yes. here. Okay. Well, you be, you better get to the end pretty quickly before uh, all the rooms get taken. We guess based on what we can see here, we're guessing it's area number two, Joel. Yeah. Okay. I, mean, I mean, point. It's it's right there. It's, sure. You know, it's fifty feet away. Okay. Well, okay. Each square is thirty feet away, so okay. it's well, about it's about one hundred eighty feet away. Are there any uh, rules uh, or laws in this town that we should be aware of? There's no business for you to wander around at nighttime. Right. We this is a very safe town and we keep it that way. Do you want to escort us there though? Make sure we stay out of trouble? Keep us safe. Alright. Why are you worried? Nothing's gonna to happen to you here. No, but you know, we, we want to, we want to be on the up and up with you guys. Okay, fine. We'll we'll escort you down there, but then we have to get back to our guard duty. What, what is your name by the way, uh, Brave uh, Brave Soul? Ducat. Ducat? Here's a silver piece for your trouble. What's your name? Be careful, that's gonna be. You, you get an elbow to the side. You certainly don't need to give us a silver piece. We're doing our jobs. My, by the way, my name is Frag. Frag. Frag is an orc. That is an awesome name. I wish I had chosen that name. As in like Frag Grenade? As in Fraggle Rock. Is it Orc Gargel? Yes. The um. The uh, one of the other guards that did not talk is also an orc, and the third guard is a human. Frag ha Frag is carrying a spear. Can we tell what the other ones are carrying? Uh, the uh, one of the others is also carrying carrying a spear, and the third one's carrying a short sword. And they're on foot. They're on foot. Yep. They're I mean, they're obviously guards. On guard duty. Okay, and where are our mounts? Uh, under under your arm. butts. <laughs> Did you catch that, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> hey, old. All right, so they start to lead the way. I right. trample them with our horse. No. <laughs> so uh, it uh, it only takes a a minute or two to walk down, and they say, "Okay, stay out of trouble. We'll leave you now." All right, when you guys hit off-duty, come on down. If we're still here, I'll buy you around. Oh, we'll be making our rounds in, around here. Don't worry. Well, when you're off-duty, come on and I'll buy you around. Well, you have to be off-duty. Well, we'll see. We've got, we've got to get back to the castle and, and get our sleep. Okay. But we appreciate the offer. Uh, you know, be safe, and, and, and um, we like to see good, friendly people here. This is a, this is a town that, that has its riffraff, but, so be careful. You don't want to wander around at night. By yourselves in, in an unfamiliar town. Okay. Or if, if you do, you just just watch your back. Are there any places that we should watch out for during the day, Frank? Well, it doesn't matter. You're just passing through town, aren't you? Well, it was a long journey. We might want to rest a day before continuing on. Well, I suggest uh, talk to Abraham or or, um, or Glammy, the the bartender. They'll, okay. they'll you know, they can hey, answer hey, any uh, questions uh, you have. We, your character, idiot. Lambie? I've been working with the Canadians a lot. I just got back from there. Is it rubbing off? Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, he, we've been here. We're, we're tired. We might want to stay another day. He, you know, well, he has been. An, he's a ranger, so maybe that fits. <laughs> All right, so you are... Uh, the Canadians can't be rangers. So there you go. <laughs> They're Mounties. Anyway. So, so in front of you is a building. Yeah, they're uh, being mounted, yes. There's, a, there's yeah. a sign there that clearly says <laughs> in uh, the Inn of Abraham. Uh, there, no, there's, I think this is the end. There's a, yeah, you'll see the main building there. Uh, wow, there's a lot of heat coming out of this computer. Yeah, it is. It's a desktop and a laptop shape. Yeah, there's a main building here. Now you can use your mouse to move over that building and then hold down the button on the mouse and it'll cause a circle to appear around that building. I don't have the, um, that map on the computer here. Sure you do. You do? Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, yeah. this isn't roll twenty. This is the internet. Click roll twenty. Where's roll twenty? Google Hangout. Click roll twenty. Uh, you got to go to Google Hangouts first. Right here. So that is, uh, you see that picture of Mike? Uh, go back down to here. Hover over okay. over that icon, and then you see Mike. Okay. Good. Chris, what are you playing at, man? I'm and then to here. Sorry, I'm, 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 I'm,
Uh, and then okay, here's the map. Okay. And then we can zoom it by right. changing that percentage. So maybe you want to increase the zoom on that so that you can see it a little better. And now move your mouse over the number two and then hold down the left button and just hold it down. There, now everybody, both sitting at their house and us on our screens. So this just tells you this is where we are? Yep, exactly. And now oh, we can all okay. see that. Okay. Nice job. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Does it look like we see a lot of horses outside right now? Does it appear to be pretty uh, busy? Is there a stable? Board? I was just stop. Is there a stable? Well, you can. I mean, you can. You can tell that there is a uh, horse corral right here. Okay. Uh, there. I mean, you, you'd have to go back to see what what's back here, but it that looks like a barn to you. All right. And this is the main building. I, you can't really see what else is behind there. So guys, behind that inn, there are some smaller buildings, and one of them appears to be a barn, and the other a stable. A call for stable boy. For stable boy. Honey, you, you're you're outside calling stable, stable boy. boy. It's kind of loud in there. I don't know if anybody heard well, you. Well, he was around outside. All right, so um, two boys come up to you. Can I help you, sir? Yes, you the stable boys for here. That's me. What are your names? I'm Belmar. Belmar. Belmar, and um, this is my friend James. You, James says hi. Uh, Belmar is a 12-year-old boy. Did but, he play for Brazil in no. the World uh, Cup? James is a little older. He says, I've, I've got to get back inside. I, I work in there. If you've got horses, uh, Belmar can, can help take care. Do you need me to get Abraham for you? Please. Okay, I'll see if he's available. Right, what's his name? So Belmar, so Belmar says, okay, bring your, bring your horses around, around here. Uh, I can take them for you. Uh, uh, there's plenty of room here. Uh, oh, so he, he, is it, is it obviously works for well, this? Well, he's a 12 year old boy. Uh, well, I mean, that, he's not going to steal our stuff. Human? He's human. Uh, he's I'll 5 feet notice. tall, 85 pounds. He has long black hair. I'll do a notice check. <laughs> okay, and. I need to do streetwise, but trust him. And through the front door comes a, um, a young man, a short young man. He's got a. Um, He's got graying brown hair, a large wax mustache, and he wears a uh, leather, red leather vest over his apron and trousers. And he says, my name is Abraham. Can I help you? Yeah, we're looking for uh, uh, rooms for the night. Okay. Uh, rooms, 12 silver pieces plus 6 silver pieces for each person and extra person in the room. Uh, I do have a couple rooms available. I, I just saw Belmar taking your horses back to the barn. I, uh, he'll he'll take care of them fine. There there's uh, enough empty stalls back there. You can come on in. You've got plenty of time to eat if you want to eat. Twelve SP for the night. I'm gonna have the egg plant. Egg plant there's uh, six of you. I I would recommend two rooms. Yeah, we, we've got four beds in each room. Uh, or or up up to four people. Can... Well, if it if. Uh, <laughs> To separate the rooms. All right, two two rooms sounds good. Yes. Are they attached? Uh, <laughs> my my rooms are uh, twenty square feet. Ten by ten. Actually. All right, that's ten that's, by that's ten would be a hundred square feet. Twenty by ten. Two, <laughs> two ten by ten squares. I have four, forty feet of room per room. <laughs> it's one busy long. It's two. Not just the usuals are here. The, the, the few fellows that live here. Very good. You said 12 SP per night and 6 SP per additional person? That's right. If, if you're interested, uh, it doesn't look like you have a whole lot of um, luggage or, or anything with you, so... I, I, pr I presume he, he's looking at those weapons. I presume that um, there's not going to be any trouble here. He, he's a nice, friendly guy. He, he, he's, he's not um, trying to threaten you. We, we just keep it for the road. Okay, I understand. Come on, oh, come on. Eight silver pieces for all of us, if that's reasonable. I'll give you two gold pieces. Do you want to look up what the conversion rate is first? Before silver you... 20 silver equals 1 GP. Okay. So I'm offering two, two, 2 GP for the night. That's not my price. My price is up there on the wall. 12 silver pieces plus 6 I'm silver pieces. I'm haggling. No. 
There's the price. You take it or well, leave what, it. What, what if I did a, a short... I'm a busy guy. I really don't have time for this. I, I, do, do you want the rooms or not? We want the rooms here, please. Take Very well. Rooms. All right. Well, thank you for your well, time. Here, take three, take three GP and have a nice night. Well, that's very, oh. very generous of you. Go. Head on, head on in the, and I, I imagine you guys have a treasurer that's keeping track of this, or, maybe, or you're tracking, you're tracking your own. You tell us to bring us food and drink. For, oh, we're gonna go in the bar and listen. That's go up, go up to the bar, ask for the, ask for Glammy, and um, he'll have Rillis, uh hook you up with some food. I'm not sure what she has on the menu tonight. Rillis, Rillis is the I'll cook. Keep track of the money. Eggplant part. <laughs> How could you not say eggplant part? R-E-L-L-I-S, Rellis? R-I-L-L-I-S, Rellis. R-I-L-L-I-S. Now I'm thinking of that thing. Now I'm thinking of the video you guys showed me. Yes. So when you walk in, it's a room that's 25 by 25. There's four square tables with uh, four chairs around them you might want to right when you walk in Adam, sorry. and then a and then a bar <laughs> on the far end then then there's a large round table in the upper left hand corner uh will we, will we all sit around a large round table is it unoccupied yeah and it's unoccupied all right so we go sit around the, the are those other tables occupied is the bar occupied well you, you see four other people sitting at the tables uh there's two at each of two tables and two empty tables nobody's at the bar so it's so there's people there, but it's not terribly crowded. What day of the week is it? It's Tuesday night. Is there any entertainment? <laughs> they obviously move game night to Mondays like we did. <laughs> uh, two of the two of the guys at the table are playing cards. The other two guys are um, at the other table. One of the two guys is a midget, and he's talking with the other guy. They're all four of them are humans. All right, are they talking loud enough that we can hear them from the round table? Well, let's get our food, and then we'll figure out what we're gonna. Hey, uh, another dwarf. So, you, so a boy comes up to you. You recognize him as the boy from outside. James, good to see you again. Good. How are you, sir? Very good, thank you. We'll be staying here. For the well, night. Good. Too. Good. What can, what can I get you? We uh, the menu's up over there. We've got some ale, beer, mead, or wine. And uh, I think Rillis has cooked up some um, smoked hog tonight. Oh, that sounds delightful. I'll have. Oh, with, 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 what, what are the prices on these? With potatoes. Um, it's two silver, or one copper piece for the meal. And the ale is, there, I've got a list of price, 17 copper, 8 copper for beer, 8 silver pieces for mead, or 9 to 16 silver pieces for wine, depending on what size of bottle you with get. The meal, the food is one copper? That. Anyway. That's why I just threw out off the top of my head. Oh, did I say one copper? I meant one silver. Oh, why did you question? Ten copper? I was getting a good deal. That was like the Costco of the <laughs> medieval world right there. We can stock up. Oh, uh, Abraham would um, have my hide if I made a mistake like that. So we wouldn't want you in trouble. Uh, uh, any any fresh fish from the river? Not tonight. Not Maybe tomorrow. The, fi the fishermen... Don't go fishing. You you must not be from around here because the fishermen don't go fishing on Mondays. Uh, so that they would have um, gone out today and and then uh, they don't have everything ready for you know, for us yet. Have you got any uh, apples that I can go back later and give to the horses? Well, they take care of the horses. Uh, I'll, I'll ask Is I'll ask Rillis and see. But I'll take I'll take two. But don't worry. Um, Belmar is back there feeding them. Very good. Sleep with your animals. Another question. I'll take. I'll take my. I'll, I'll take, take two hogs and two meats. I'll take a hog and a beer. Okay. Okay. I'm a dwarf. I, I'm hardy. Yeah, you gotta take two. Delaware quarters and ale and a hog. So you see Belmar go over to the barkeeper. Uh, he's he's kind of an ugly guy. He's about um, a young guy. He's about five foot nine. Uh, he's got long, stringy black hair and a, and a big beard. And I'm sorry, I, sorry I don't have pictures of all these guys, but it, it would not be easy to find pictures that fit all these descriptions. You're, you're, talking, you're, talking, you're talking about Clammy now. Of an, of I'm talking about Clammy, the barkeeper. The barkeeper. Where would you find a picture of an ugly guy with beard? I, I go Hagrid. I would just do a search online for an ugly guy with beard. <laughs> <laughs> and then Balmar comes back in. So, okay, your horses are all set. 
Valpir is uh, back there taking care of them now. He's the stable boy. I mean, I, I just kind of help out. What's his name? Valpir. F A L P I R. That's different from James. Right. James is up there with Glammy the barkeeper. Got it. You're talking to Belmar, and Valpir is back there taking care of the okay, horses. James. Who's on first? What's on second? Right. Hey, you know, when know. you've got a murder mystery, what kind of mystery would it be if you only had two people in the <laughs> That's true. in the story? But you know, if it's an episode of CSI or House, it's usually the main character that they spend at least six minutes exposition on. That is the one who did it. Who seems like a good guy. <laughs> By minute but number just that one <laughs> thing that he does weird. That's right. James, is it lupus? Okay, it's so, not lupus. so to recount, Belmar is 12 years old. He's just a general helper. James yep. is the assistant barkeep. Yeah. Glammy is the barkeep. Right. Abraham has a large max, max mustache. Bar order. He's the innkeeper. The bar. It's 12 silver pieces a night and 6 silver pieces per additional person. We pay 3, so we pay a little extra. Mm -hmm. uh, Relis is the waitress serving wench cook. Yeah, you haven't yeah. seen her yet. And Falpier is the stable boy. And you haven't seen him yet. And there's four men in the inn. Two at each table. Elric leans forward to his companions as they're waiting for their food, quickly glancing to see if anybody's watching, and he whispers, It might be wise. We know that the murder was last night. We can find out what people were doing the night before. If they have alibis, we can take them off of our list. The fella at the ta round table with a deck of cards calls over to the table, Hey, any guys you want to play some cards? <laughs> I'm just, I'm, just, I'm not very good at it. I'm just trying to learn how, and, and I need somebody to, to <laughs> practice with. <laughs> sure, we'll play some cards. Well, come on, on, come on over. Have a seat. So there's two I got, I got room. Yeah, I got room for two of you. I, I don't know if this is his line. <laughs> Elric stands up. He'll be number two. I don't play cards with elves. <laughs> where, I could, where my back could be against the wall if possible. Okay. Um, oh, I forgot to get your card deck out. All right. What, what, All what right. other names have you been playing? Bob's right over there. To the right of the chimney. Uh, how do you do? My name is Wilfong. I, I don't remember seeing you guys around here before. Wilfong? Well met, Wilfong. I am Wilfong. He's a... Uh, He's fine. He's a short guy, five foot three, 110 pounds. He's got a small mustache, a trim beard, medium length back, black hair. He's pretty well dressed. What's the um, W I L F O N G? Yep. W I L F O N G. Yeah, right. Do you want chokers? Uh, no, equally not. And what's the other guy's name? Uh, Captain Bassmar. Nice to meet you. Bassmar. And is it neither of these is the midget? No, the midget and another guy are at the, the other table. Well, let's see both. Curious. All right, who wants, who wants to play a little hand of poker here? Poker. It is a game I have not seen in some time. Annie up uh, two silver pieces. Poker. poker. Captain Bassmar says that. Uh, you, you crazy fool. you always beating me. I don't know how you do it, but I'm going to get my money back for you one of these days. Oh boy. Well, I thank you for the invitation. How long have you lived in the town? Oh, many years. Many years. I've seen a, a, a good, prosperous town. Fishing's good here. The, um, is this Wolf fishing, or Captain? Um, this is Captain talking. The fishing's good here. Uh, the, the, uh, the tailor does a great job. The blacksmith, he's well known in the area. What's his name? The blacksmith. Yeah. <laughs> You're such a jerk. <laughs> He's in a name of you. Gotta prepare. This yeah. is why I just have a list of names now. Is his name Lucky? Thor. Oh. Smitty. Smore. Thor. <laughs> He's a big hammer. No, oh, uh, you're talking about Gilmy. Gil Gilmy, the dwarven weaponsmith. You got have a lot in I common thought, with him. I thought it was uh, good old Gilmy. He makes hammers, flails, morning stars. Quarterstaffs, sling bullets. He's a he's a good guy. Overcharges well, people a little bit, but he does a good job. Uh, that's all I said. Yeah. You can't go wrong. What you looking for a, a weapon? Uh, that 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 little thing that you have there. That, that's not going to get you very far, is it? You're not out hunting orcs, are you? I got what I got. 
You got what you got. I that... think I've seen his sign. I think it says, you found it, I pound it. Who are the guys that are playing cards? Uh, you've got uh, Elric, and you've got El Dane. And uh, as the cards begin, Elric raises a hand to one of the boys and suggests that... Uh, Glammy. To Glammy? Bar Glammy's a barker. Bartender, around for the men at the table, please. All right, that's what we like. LD like, is watching uh, him uh, very, 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 very hospitable. So, um, <laughs> Elding, here you've got. Here are your five cards. You've got a two of diamonds, a five of diamonds, an eight of spades, an ace of spades, and a ten of hearts. You can type that in the chat window. I can chat. <laughs> Where's the chat window? Let's see if your chat window is open. That might be easier if you try to So, uh, we are going to make this a little smaller so you have some more real estate. So, names only. And then I click here on the chat window. I go, I go for aces and eight. And now, um, to talk to somebody, you can either write to everybody by just typing in here and okay. hitting send, and everybody yep. will read it. But Mike's name is where's he's, Mike? He's Elding. But no, what's he listed as here? Oh, yeah, I guess that'd be a good idea. M playing cards to not just tell everybody what he has. Right, Mike, are you logged into Roll Twenty to D Twenty right now? No, I can't get into the Roll Twenty. Oh, so you can't chat to him this way. So I could just send him a message. Try to, you know, but, jump out and you guys resetting the invite to get back in. We could try doing that. Uh, do you have Mike or, on Or I could show Mike his cards on the camera. Oh, that's an idea, too. But here, where's Mike? Here. If you write to Mike in this chat window, only he will see. But okay. then you will have to go back to where we were before. Do you know how to go back? Um, is the tab up there somewhere? Yeah, it's this tab right there, I think. Let's see. Mm. Oh, maybe not this tab. Uh, hover over that, and then click on the map. Okay. okay. All right, so now to get back... Click on that once, and then go there, and then to the left, and there's his chat window. Okay. And then there's Adam's chat window if you need to chat with Adam. Okay. And Chris is available in the chat. Can you guys still hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, I keep bouncing back and forth between my phone and my computer. All those well. Yeah, so... Bobby would be happy to be on the title when he shuffled his show. I have been quite happy with that. Where are you getting this information about this? Just a meteorologist breaks it that way. It's got to be right. I saw it on the internet. The Palmer's Almanac says. Somebody reposted it on uh, Facebook, so it's got to be. Yeah, Facebook never lost. Did you see that, uh, that the meteor, or rather the asteroid that was supposed to pass us on the west of this weekend? It appears a piece of it broke off. Nicaragua? Nicaragua. It smashed into Nicaragua. Yeah. Made a pretty big crater. Near the airport. So it killed 20 people, but it only did $3 worth of damage. Their dollar's not worth a lot. Did it really kill people? No. It I heard it was by the airport, but didn't hit anybody. Did, um... I was just trying to be funny. Sorry, sorry, Adam. I should have laughed at the joke, but I immediately went to the <laughs> to the problem solving. So Will Fong asked uh, how many cards you guys want. Captain Bassmar say, "Well, you know, I'll I'll take three. And what about uh, what did I get for cards? Oh, that was uh, that was you. Sorry, I thought it was Elfran. Elfran. It was Eldane. It was Mike. And then yeah, I, I got Eldane and Elric. El. All right, sorry. Uh, you could disregard the, the message I sent to you, Adam. <laughs> or Adam, if you want to play cards, that's fine too. I'll just step back, make it easier. Yeah, we'll, yeah I'll play. Yeah, so we'll have uh, Adam in there instead, the Elven Ranger. I'll take three. I like a mess. I'll take two. You're going to discard your lowest ones? Mike? Thanks, bro. And Captain Basmar says I'll take uh, two. And you, you show you the cards. Go back on you, Adam. Sorry, buddy. You show the cards. Uh, 
Ephraim has a pair of kings. He says, okay, you win, you, you win the pot. So Ephraim takes away um, eight silver pieces with him. Ooh, Captain, ba Captain Basmar pounds the table and says, again, I just can't win this game. I said another round over that table. <laughs> so you, you say, well, you, you boys want one more hand? I, I don't even know what I have. <laughs> Uh, I asked for three. I asked for three cards, and I. All right. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I didn't tell you, but but um. But um. Apparently, I lost. Ephra, yeah, Ephraim had the Ephraim had the only pair on the table. Well, he had a pair of twos, but his pair of kings beat out uh, Eldin's pair of twos. Okay. If you guys want to play one more time, uh, it's my deal because it's because it's my table. And that's the rules here. Uh, the the ante is eight well, silver fine. pieces. I think I'm done. I, 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 I've, seen, I've seen your, I've seen your kind of I'm just learning, my son. I, don't I, know, I, I, I highly doubt you're just learning. I just lost the game. I just lost the game to your friend. Well, you it, he, uh, he looks to Ephraim. E Surely you're going to play another round, aren't you? Awesome. <clears throat> uh, uh, I'm sorry, I... Yeah, uh, oh, of yeah. I'll cover. yeah, of course you will. I'll stay and play another hand, of course. All right. Oh, you want to join in on that one? If you're still willing to take another player... Come on in, sit down. Elric sits down, smiling, just as the drinks arrive. Which you, is perfect, so I... You can I, come over and look at your hand, well, then. I move back and uh, walk up to, towards the bar to get a drink, but I move into the shadows Short and kind of keep an eye on what's going on. So, uh, Adam won that round? First uh, yeah, Adam won Thank you. Got it. Okay. And, uh... It's clear that Elric is not so good at this game because he seems like he is smiling slightly as he looks at his hand. And I just sent to uh, Adam his hand. So, Captain, you you are a fisherman, then? Yes. And uh, well, 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 more of a more of a merchant. I I don't go out and fish. I I deal. Ah. I deal in goods. What types of goods do you do you trade? Oh, um, equipment, uh, fish. I buy 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 some of the finest fish from here. The down in the. Uh, he's, stu he's stumbling a little. With what he's saying. I, I'm I'm concentrating on the game. I'm sorry, young man. I, I'm sorry, sir. Yes, of course. Well, I'm, I'm I'm gonna bet I'm gonna bet four silver pieces. And um, Wolfang, Wolfang, who's quietly taking in everything, looking very slyly at you guys, says, um, "I'm gonna drop out. I I I just can't play this game. I." I... So the, they look at um, Ephraim. What do you want to do? Come on, little man. Pay or pay or drop. You Adam. I'll call. Okay, and. Um, oh wait, I called. Yeah. Okay. And. Wait, I, and what I'm about calling. what about you, uh, Elric? Are you in or out? I think I'm going to pay the four silver to see the next round. Okay. How many cards do you want? I think I shall replace. He's gonna take. He's gonna take. Uh, Captain Basmar takes two. Uh, two. Is there anybody watching the game around us? No, there, we're, no all there, paying, we're, we're all paying attention to what's going on. There's nobody else in there. Uh, Ephraim, do you want to draw? Oh yeah, I take uh, three. So you're keeping your pair and discarding the other two. Correct. Okay. Okay. So. Elric does not look as happy as he was in the first hand. So Captain Basmar smiles. He lays down the cards and says, Ha! My luck is finally going to change. He shows a pair of aces. Oh, my. Ephraim gives him a little sly look and says, That's pretty good, but I got two pair. I got tens and queens. Way to go, Adam. And, and, um... You've both taken my money. I'll and and Elwood just throws his, his cards up and, uh, on the table and says, that's it for me. Mm -hmm. 
So uh, Adam, so Adam's really cleaning up, and um, another round of drinks for the men at the table, please. In the meantime, I sit down and start talking at the other table, saying, "Do these guys gamble here a lot?" Who's talking? To, who are you talking to? I'm just, who invited you over here? Sorry, I was just trying to make friends and conversation. What's going on here? We're where are you guys? Here. Where are you? All right, we'll sit down. Where are you, where are you guys from? Let me get you around while we talk. Right, call around over for these two. All right, and so um, who am I talking to? The regular guy and the midget. So James brings a, another round of drinks to you guys. He he kind of gives you a look of bewilderment. I've never seen anybody buy so many drinks around here. <laughs> Anytime you want to buy me one, yeah, I'm, 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 all, I'm all set. We'll take sure you get to do the tip. <laughs> thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank God for being uh, 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 Your generosity. Maybe you ought to be talking to Rillis back there. Maybe you really get lucky. Not drawing attention towards us. <laughs> thank you. So at, at that moment, out, out of the kitchen, uh, from up the stairs, which where the kitchen is, comes out a, a very attractive woman with long blonde hair. Say hey, Jeff. What you wearing? <laughs> She's wearing a, a long apron. That's it? <laughs> That's it? Yes! Humana, humana. Whoa. You can bake my bread anytime. Can you show me a picture? I like this fantasy game. She's a, she's a, young, she's a young lady. You can't figure she's any older than 17. She, she walks right up to um, Darter. Says, how you doing, big boy? Who's Darter? That's Jeff. Oh, you get it right. How you doing, big boy? He's a dwarf. Yeah, hey, he's a, he's a big boy for a dwarf. Here, right, for here's your dinner. More, plenty more where that came from. And um, she hands the plate to Mike. Hey, handsome, how you doing? Good to see you tonight. And uh, she, Mike, you she, your butt? she sides up to next to Efran, gives him a little rub on the shoulder. Hey, I I, I see you're, you're you're a really skilled player. You know, Captain Basmar and Wilfong. They, they they should have robbed you blind by now. You you must really got something special there, huh? I like intelligent men. And she looks at Josh. Do I have cards in my hand? <laughs> <laughs> you you're you're a pretty mysterious person. You you kind of I could tell you you're into some of those um, pretty tricky things, aren't you? You you. Why, why don't you come visit me later and I'll show you? I come late by later. You show me a little magic. You betcha. I'll, I'll make things rise. Never mind. <laughs> She she walk over she walk over to John Doe with his plate. It says, um, you know, you're you're a fine looking person. You're very uh, very refined. I could tell you're a man of man of the church. That's you, Chris. I find that very respectable. Maybe sometime you can tell me a little more about your faith. Absolutely, anytime you'd like. She's built in the crowd. She owns us. Well, we are just in the crowd. <laughs> would you Would you like to see my holy symbol? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, get your mind out of the gutter. Finally, the man, the man with the long sword, and uh, save the best for last for for you. She, she's over L. Rip, giving him his plate. Save the extra, extra big uh, dish for you. You want some more? You just let me know, okay? A pleasure. All right. Thanks. So, so with another uh, swivel of the hips and wink of the eye, she's back into the kitchen, and then you've got and you've got your plate there. Captain, you who get was that you, lovely lass. Uh, ah, she's something else, huh? That's Rillis. She's a good cook, too. I imagine she cooks a lot in that kitchen of hers. Uh, is, that, she, is she a... Uh, that's her job. Attached to anybody, shall we say? Uh, people come and go. I don't know. Abraham won't, won't like it too much if uh, we're messing around with the work too often, and I want to stay in good with him. Otherwise, he'll kick me right out of here. So. You're a wise man. I, I, I got plenty of other... Pretty women, and lots of other Station to see. Uh, other uh, ports. So, yeah. so what are the two guys at my table? I got the midget and the regular sized guy. Yep. Names, places. Is that a dwarf or a human short person? I, well, it's a half one. Uh, I don't know. I can find them. I guess back in the 1970s or 80s when they wrote these things, you were still using terms like midget. So he's a midget. Human. A midget human. Okay. Um. And, and the the other guy, the other guy, about thirty years old, uh, and about a, about the same size as the other guys, five foot five, about one hundred fifteen pounds. These are all pretty small people. I guess that's the way they grow them here in, in Groton. Too much hog. So, uh, so he says, my name is Philmar. Philmar. 
That's the midget? No, that's the uh, other guy. And th th this is Oscar. How you do? Do we need some? Great, how are you guys? Are you from, are you from around here? Are you we we live life? here. Live here, locals. I, uh, I work at the castle. Oscar does? Yeah. What do you do there? Uh, just odd jobs. Whatever you know, whatever they need me to do. Whatever the mayor tells me they, that they need. Who is the mayor what, what, what do you do, Fillmore? Mayor Arnis. Do you guy? You really aren't from around here, are you? No. You're kind of dumb. It's a she. That was way off. Yeah, I mean, you're... I hope you're not as dumb as you you sound. Because you don't because you don't look that you don't look that dumb but you kind of sound a what little dumb so 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 I hope you're not as dumb as you sound you but you're but you're smarter than you look so so I guess that's okay. Yeah, they're both humans. So Oscar works for the Oscar works at the castle. Yeah, local does odd jobs at the castle. Yeah. Fillmore, what do you do? I'm a dog trainer. Dog trainer? They got a lot of call for that around here. Yeah, <laughs> some. Are they like hunting I, dogs? I, yeah, I, I teach them to hunt. The hunting's good in the woods, you know. You from around here? Oh, we, we just came down from um, Red Hill North. Yeah, I guess you guys don't make it down here too often, huh? No, we don't. You, you, you're, 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 you obviously don't know where you are, what you're doing, who you're talking to, or what what, what goes on around this, here. So. Honestly, this is the farthest I've ever been from home. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, uh... You know what? What do you think? What, what, what are you up to? What are you doing in town? Why well, try to buy the food? We were, we were thinking of passing through. We might spend an extra day or two here because we're pretty tired from the road. Wow, this really is. Is it good? Yeah, food's good. This really is stupendous. You should get another plate. Everybody had two. So, uh, so what do you guys do for a living? Well, I just I just graduated. I was dual majoring. I was going to the Wizard Academy and to um, Bible school. Okay, so. Wow. Yeah, okay. So so you really don't do anything. Okay. No, I'm still figuring out how to do that. But I could do some little magic tricks if you like. So so you're like a liberal arts major, Josh? Dude, I have religion. And press the digitation. Yeah. That's a fancy word. Maybe you worship the god of magic. So so uh, Oscar says to the uh, Oscar says to Philmar, hey, you uh, hook him up with Prisca, huh? And they both start laughing. <laughs> what what's Pris Prisca? Nothing you would understand. Oh, try me, try me. So, I'll do another check. so, what about that that little dwarf guy? What does he do? Is he is oh, he is he um? Uh, yeah, is he, he here? Smashes to, things. Look at him. He, he's here to start trouble. Nah, he just kind of helps us uh, keep the the riffraff away. And uh, we'll call it protection for the road. All of a sudden, you look up and you can see at the doorway the uh, three guards that you uh, ran into earlier. That walk through the door. Hey, Frank! Frank! Come, join us for a drink! They give you a nod. Abraham comes out. So how's it going, guys? Everything's cool here tonight. They say, I right, see you got some company here, huh? Let us know if you need any, you need any help or you got any problem, okay? Abraham says, eh, you know, they're, they're cool. They're, they're behaving themselves. Neutral good. Neutral good. So they, um, okay, they turn around and walk out. All right. Check it out, hey, boss. Abraham comes over to you, says, "So, how you guys doing? You like the food? Oh, food was great. Rilis is, Rilis is a good cook. Drink is drink is good. We're making some friends. We're making friends here. <laughs> you guys are pretty desperate for friends, huh? Well, we're doing town. We gotta make a few. You know. Making friends and losing money. I've lost my share of silver. Oh, uh, you're playing cards, with Will Fong, huh? He's a professional gambler. She, she is that what he does so, for a living? He was yeah. very quiet." That he, that he, did he give you the old "I'm just learning this game" routine? Uh, yes, that's precisely what uh, he said. What a guy, huh? Ah, uh, now I see. Well, always good to make some friends. So, you mind if I sit down with you guys? No, please have a seat. So, so Abraham sits at the round table with you. Uh, uh, Will Fong has put away his cards. And actually, Will Fong said, I, "You know, I've had it for the night. I'm gonna, I'm gonna head to bed. A little early for me, but I gotta be up early in the morning." So. Uh, I I'll catch you guys lesson. later. Thank you, Will Fong. A pleasure to meet you. No, well, my pleasure too. And Captain Basmar, who's uh, you know, proven to be more than friendly, says, "Oh, I'll join you guys." Sure. So he I'll pulls up his chair to your table. So, so we got the eight of you around the table now. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and Philmar and Oscar haven't joined this. No, they're they're at their own table. Guys, you want to join this too? They they just keep kind of looking at you and, and whispering each other and snickering. Okay. Well, okay. So. 
Oh, don't Abraham says, don't let those guys bother you. Yeah, what's their story? They're not that friendly. I mean, they they, they introduced themselves. They mentioned somebody Prisca, but they wouldn't say anything else. After that. <laughs> and then Abraham laughs. <laughs> That's funny, Who's Prisca. Who's Prisca? He's the town idiot. He's the beggar. Uh, oh, I thought we were going to a snipe hunt. <laughs> what's his story? He's uh, an idiot, and he begs. So he's the town idiot beggar. Yeah, why, are you looking for a job? I, I thought yeah. that job was cool, right? <laughs> My observations okay. tell me those two over there aren't too far from the town idiot. Yeah. Right, well, they're they're also very good tenants of mine, so they, they stay out of trouble. They never cause me trouble. And they, I, uh, I lean they, over to... Uh, he's well connected with the mayor, so I'm not going to mess with him. Who's next to me? You pick. <laughs> I, I lean over to I lean over to Josh, who is what's his name? Ducat. Ducat, like gold. Ducat. Ducat. Yeah. Oh yeah, let Ducat, and I say maybe we should talk to this the, 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 the uh, person. He may see a lot of things and know a lot of things. Is Prisca a man or a woman? Well, you haven't met Prisca. You don't know. Well, that's an Abraham. Prisca sounds like a, a woman's name, but. No, he, it's, you don't usually see too many town idiots who are beggars or women. No, no, he, no, he's a guy. Okay. He's um, and actually, I may call him an idiot. He's he's not really an idiot. He he's just he's got he's got some friends in this town and and he's uh, not a hard worker. So, so um, he he he's he's, he's he's been known to pick a pocket or two. So just watch out for him. He. He lives, in the middle, middle he lives in the shack. Uh, <laughs> he lives in the shack down the road. If we were to watch out for him, which shack would that be? So we're careful. Well, I mean, it's down around the corner. Oh, okay. It's the, I mean, it's 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 the cruddiest house in town. You, you, can't, ever, you can't possibly can you, can miss it. Can you tell it. us a number or no? <laughs> no. no. <laughs> well, I mean, looking at the map. There, we don't have addresses here. It's, <laughs> he was at forty-one Christie House Lane. <laughs> And, uh, 40, said, 41 and, Groton Road. And these guys are saying that, yeah, that your mayor's a woman, huh? Arnis? Arnis, yeah. Yeah, she, she keeps a tight rein on things. Tries to, anyways. How long has she been the mayor? Oh, a long time. I mean, she, she lives there in the castle. Takes Tries to take good care of this town. Uh, you know, there, there, there's... Well, you know, there's some shady things that go on around here every now and then. I, I mean, you guys don't live on Rocky. I'm sure you know the reputation of our town. Yeah, yeah it's quite quite shady from what we hear. Yeah, well it is, but uh, the the guard keeps good watch and protects us, protects people like me. I never have any problems. What are the shady parts of town? I mean, is there is there an area we should avoid? No, I mean, it, no, it's not an area. There's, you know, there's um, you know, I mean, I'm sure you've heard the old term about the assassins, and I don't want to say it too loud. But, is that? I mean, is that true? Oh, well, yeah, I think so. I don't know. I don't know who they are, but but um, you guys said you were from Restonford, right? I mean, you, yeah, I mean, they, they, we, they've made their way up there before. Yeah, we, we've that, heard rumors. We're just kind of curious all about just you know, gotta keep yeah. ourselves safe. Yeah. Uh, I mean, business is good here, and that the assassins bring in the money somehow. I mean, people keep spending money here in this town. This town's been growing. You know, people keep coming down here to get their nets and and uh what's the tax structure for the town <laughs> so <I'm laughs> there's no tax in, in this town what are you trying to give Arnest some ideas where where does the what what power does the mayor have then she protects she she runs the guard who pays the guard she does where does she give money from? taxes you're talking to a cow <laughs> from, yeah, from, the, from the taxes. I was just told there's no taxes. Well, there's none of those taxes, but there's other taxes. There's no taxes. So there's like taxes. Are, you, are you are you just giving me a hard time here? I, I, I thought I, I thought you were my guest. I, I don't know, know if I like. I don't like where'd you get this smart smart Alec dwarf? Look at him, he's a dwarf. He doesn't know any better. He wants to go talk to rocks. They become much more interesting after they've had a lot of ale. I'll tell you that. Speaking of which, I'd very much like mm -hmm. to buy the table around. Well, you guys are drinking an awful lot tonight, huh? So uh, you're not you're not going to be heading out, I hope. Don't time. don't ride after after drinking. Three. So how long do you expect to stay in town? Like I said, probably a day or two, maybe. Three. It was a long three ride. at most. We're pretty. It was a long ride. We're tired. Do you have any plans for tomorrow? 
No, any you can suggest, we do. Do you have a sightseeing well, Any sights? Well, the, the, the best thing in town is the theater. My, my good friend Barmoreau runs it. Hold on a second. I you got you got to check it out. He puts on a great show. Really? Every night. Show. Oh, you would have missed tonight's show. Oh, it's a, you know, a vaudeville magic act kind of show. Acting, a little play, a little this, a little that. It's uh, down at the theater. Who runs the theater again? Balmer, Balmer. Is he a friend of yours? Can we get a... Can yeah, oh, yeah he's, one of my be- he's one of my best friends. Huh. He's B-A- a good guy. B-A- B-A-L... M O R R O W. You may remember that name. Yes, now I do. Okay, very good. I do not. Uh, just out of here from the. I was from the intro. As his, he, he was my senior theater owner. Oh, I've still misspelled it, but I can't. Three three possible suspects. The loop player, if I remember correctly. So do you do you get up to to? Where are we from? Rough, rough. Just the rest of the Do you get up to rest of the fourth very often, Abraham? Yeah, every now and then. Buy supplies. Yeah. Things, they, food. I thought beer, I the things sale. like that. Hey, so what is something we have up there? Yeah. So how do I you could know? use some. I haven't gotten some for quite a while. Really? Mm-hmm. I believe he uh, was up there buying ale as a district. Uh, yeah, on Sunday. Huh. How did you meet the owner of the, the theater? I'm sure that must be a good story. Well,. Uh, I mean, I, I've been living here for a long time. Uh, he came around. Uh, uh, I mean, it, it must have been a good ten years ago. I mean, he was just a young man there. Uh, he'd been having a traveling show. I think he just wanted to settle down. Is he human? Yeah. Huh. He's not like one of these uh, half-breed orcs, or, or. Um, no offense, you're not orcish. You're, must, you're, you're of good. That. You're of a good stock. I don't know about these little guys. I guess they're okay. No, I thought maybe Elvin. You mentioned prestidigitation. No, no well, not. He said they were good guys. No. Oh. Well, well, obviously there's no dwarves on them. Look, he's getting more likable. He's on drink number three. Wait until <laughs> number six. He'll be downright friendly. Six, he's a dwarf. He'll be like sixteen. <laughs> so the theater might be a good place to visit. A oh good sure. Suggestion. Yeah, I mean it's it's gonna be closed now. I guess, um, you think uh, yeah the, the show's probably over. The show starts at eight o'clock sharp. You you'll need to buy tickets because um, perhaps. Well, I mean there, there's always room for people. He always has a good crowd, okay. but it's very reasonably priced and and uh, they'll keep you busy for a few hours. It uh, they're probably they probably let out by now. It's. About 10 or 11 o'clock, I think. Well, maybe tomorrow night then. Yeah. You don't get the after uh, show crowd showing up? People don't like to stay out late in this town. It, you know, they're asking for trouble if they do. The reputation. Yeah, you got it. It's one of the few really good things that we can do uh, without worrying about. I mean, nobody ever gets hurt over there. He, Him and his uh, friends keep careful watch of what's going on there. If my friend John Doe should like to pay his respects to his God, is there a... Is there a church that he can attend to do such a thing in the next day or two? A temple? Well, there's the big church, Osprum, the Church of Osprum. My good friend Harper is the high priest there. Ah, well, and are they uh, multi-denominational? Um, yeah, I mean, you can you can pretty much pray for whatever you want there. It's there. It's the the the. You'll um. I think we'll stumble under on, our our, our click on this map here. I pray to the god Bacab, by the way. Bacab, who's Bacab? John Doe. Uh, no, not John Doe. It's uh, Kev Horn Lorlar. Can you can you type that in the chat so I don't forget it and I can <laughs> see it? It's on the it's on the screen. Have you? Can we just call you John Doe anyway? A- uh, Abraham, uh, yeah, Abraham he, points he out the corner of the uh, uh, the tavern. To, to, to over there's the edge. Time. Over there is the edge of my property, and um, if you uh, I, if you I look at, you if you look in the back there, you. you'll see a, a another building that's surrounded by the fence. That's the uh, that's the temple back there. It, okay, so just a quick time out. Chris's name is Kevorn Loyalar, and if you look at his icon uh, on the left of the screen in okay. blue, that, there's his name. 
And then Joel is pointing out the location of the church for us. And if you could... Which is actually in the backyard of Abraham. It's in the backyard of the... Don't go crawling through my backyard. That's why we have roads. I wouldn't go there until tomorrow. Of course. What was that, number 52? Number three. Number three. So it's on the road that faces the lake. Okay. So, so you are at number two. The mm -hmm. castle's number one. Yep. And now the temple's at number three. You're close though, Jeff. I bet you can't guess what building the theater is. Number four. And, yeah. and by, the theater is up the road. Uh, yes. Texas, it's take a left. Turn it up to 11. <laughs> There's the problem with not making a D&D. You can't put all your important places... In the, the first, first five. In the first five. <laughs> Let me put my the important ones and then fill in from there. <laughs> I don't know if that's true though. I could be completely off. It might be number ten that's the key, right? Smart. If it is, number eleven is worthless. Well, so, so what you're saying is we don't really Perfect. What's so we don't really use the temple. <laughs> <laughs> so that now um Rillis walks up to to the table. And she says, Abra Abraham, I, I'm, I'm going to shut down the kitchen now, okay? And then I'm going to head to bed. Abraham says, fine. You go on, go on out. Everything's going to be bar fine now. Not, well, yeah, Glammy's going to take care of the bar for a while. And so what's her story? I mean, she's awfully attractive to be still working. Well, you know, she's a... Uh, that's the attractive young woman who could actually cook. Up by now. Oh, yeah, I was good friends with uh, with her father. He moved, you know, he moved uh, to another town. He's... I think he, he was trying to farm and couldn't really make a living out of it. But she you know, she wanted to stay in the village. She likes it here. She's got a lot of friends. So so uh, she's a good cook. This is the only place to eat. I think I got something pretty good with her. So, so oh, we got uh, something pretty good with her. Are you uh, are you engaged, perhaps? No. Oh, not no, yet. no, not not not. No, not like that. She's a she's just a she's just a kid. Oh, you're really interested in that. We're in medieval times. The average lifespan is like twenty five. You better get moving. I'm for, I mean, I'm forty two years old. Oh. You're a borrowed time. Oh shit, it's <laughs> old me. <laughs> it's, it's fantasy in medieval times, so they can be as old as you want. Actually I guess you're right. We we're living in medieval times where people can create food, cure disease, and purify water. By once per day to their god, so maybe the lifespan is like 130 years old for the Dude, we can raise people from the dead. Well, only rich people. It's there's one thing that's still true in medieval times D and D, which is that the one percent, the rich one percent, get raised from the dead, and everybody else still dies. Yeah, well, I'm gonna go clean up uh, the storeroom and the and the kitchen, and then, um, start start getting uh, make sure the horses are all checked. So I'm I'm gonna start closing up for the night. But, uh, you, you guys, okay, you guys have one room, right? Um, all right, yeah, I, you guys will take room number three and four, the, the numbers on the door. Okay. Thank you. Uh, it was a pleasure meeting you, sir. Yes, what's that, what that breakfast? 6.30 6 a.m. Who's, who's, what's that, Adam? Who, who's in rooms one and two? Who's in rooms one and two? Well, okay. Will Fong's room is room number two. There's nobody in room number one. That one's vacant. Well, you want to take a, another vacant room? No, I was just curious. Will Fong. We'll take three and four. That'll be fine. Right. The, the the other four guys here, they all live here in the tavern. Will Fong, uh, I, you're, I'm, uh, I know you're, you're a good friend, Oscar. And, um, pal, and, uh, Sorry, what, they have, they have different rooms. They don't have the rooms that are for rent. Phil, they have more of a no, long Phil, room. Phil Moore and Oscar share a room. And Will Fong's room is uh, down the hall from you. And then my room's down there, too, Chips and Captain Basmar. They're, okay, so like, they're like rooms five and six or something. Well, you need to know my room now? No, I'm just trying Pretty to Pretty nosy guy, aren't you? Notes. <laughs> Their rooms are down, down there. I mean, you haven't seen how many rooms there are, so. I assume you're not obviously taking notes at the table. Just a second. Let me get my PDA out. Let me get my quill and my ink. <laughs> I, I, I'm taking notes in character. All right, so so if you want to get to your room, again, you, you guys are. I don't know if you want to map this out or not, but Ooh, if you don't, the uh, the the door is right here to your to your left. Okay. Uh, go down the hall, turn right, and um, it'll be the two doors on the north wall. The, the numbers are on the doors. Easy enough. Easy enough. All right, so we, I, you want to turn in? 
I think that's wise. We can discuss a few matters once we're yep. settled. Where's the bathroom? All this ale has gotten to me. Outside? Oh, no. the, the bushes are outside. <laughs> no, where, where outside? Left, right? Do I be wandering around the streets? You know what? You're a big boy. You can figure it out. Go where the smell is. Great. I'll just piss on your front door. That's going to not make Char Mark happy. <laughs> Charming guy, huh? Yeah, he has a day. Just watch your back when you're out there. You never know. You I've, know see, I've seen stranger things happen. What sorts of strange things have you seen? Yeah, have you got a story that you might be willing to tell us on, as we can think about as we go to sleep? Oh, boy. I, I, my memory's not so good. I put two silver pieces on the table. Yeah, my memory's getting a little better. I up at the five. Yeah, I remember now. <laughs> Minus five silver, Brian. One more round, all right. <laughs> but let me know how much total we have to pay for the drinks, too. Okay, I'll... Um, I'll ask uh, James to add it up. He's, he's, he's the best with math in this building. Okay. Um... So tell there, us a story. Tell us some. Tell, tell us of this place. Yeah. Something There's, dark and interesting. Something that might keep us awake at night. Tell well, us about the assassins. This is, here. Well, this is just between us. Of course. I mean, it's something that concerns me and Balmoro very much, and we uh, we really hate we really hate that reputation. We'd really like to see it go. I uh, I I'm pretty sure that some of these guys here know a lot about this Assassin's Guild. I don't know who, but I, I, I don't trust anybody. You know, I, I know how to watch my back. I, I trust my staff. They're, they're good. Glammy, Rillis, the boys, you know, they're, they're okay. I don't know about these other guys that live here, though, so you watch your back around them. Glancing at the captain, is his facial expression changing during this? <coughs> he looks a little hurt. <coughs> Tightening of the jaw, perhaps? <coughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Not like Bless you, Josh. Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah, Captain, this isn't about time for you to turn in. And uh, taking the hint, Captain Bassmar, uh, bid, uh, bid, bid, bid you well. Good night. A pleasure, so, Captain. So, uh, and um, Abraham kind of rolls his eyes when he hears you say that. The captain walks away. <laughs> he calls himself the captain. You know, he doesn't even own a boat. Really? Yeah, it's kind of funny. Uh, I wouldn't um, give him any grief about that, though. Because yeah, that surely last thing you need is a knife in your back tonight after a... Is a he a, he's not a gambler, then, like Mr. Iowa? No, he's a he's a merchant. He's a trader. So, I mean, so he says, but he calls himself a captain. I just say he doesn't have a boat. That's just kind of, that's kind of funny. It is funny. So, yeah, that, that'd be kind of like this... Dwarf guy calling himself a dwarf without a beard, I guess. So. What is just broker transactions and plays middleman doing? Yeah, I mean he, he he comes up with some deals for me. I don't know how he does it or where he does it, but he he's pretty shrewd. What sort of equipment does he does he deal with? Oh, lots of fishing equipment, you know, poles, nets, uh, hooks, lures, see. all that kind of stuff. Bait. Bait. Not uh, not used, previously owned. Yeah. Equipment. What about uh, the other guys who are here tonight? <clears throat> I mean, uh, Oscar and Philmar certainly weren't very talkative. Watch out for those guys. He, Oscar works at the castle. Uh, I don't know what he does there. I don't know who he knows over there. Um, Arnest, Telish, uh, Sang Sangir. They, you know, they, they're the important people over there. They seem to find work for him. Did you get all that? Yeah, I don't have any of those names. <laughs> Arnish. Ask you. Telish. Sang Gear, Arnesh, yeah. Tellus, Sang, Sangster, Sorry. Sangster, Delius. They're the teachers, the the head of the you know, the head of the guard. Don't mess with the guard. I don't know if the the guard is really involved in that or not, but I know that they take protecting this town seriously, and and they're not going to so tolerate they, any nonsense here because they don't want to see the town go down the tubes either. Do they stand above? What happens with the assassins then? Or do they, Shh, they don't say that so well. Though. Sorry. You never know who's listening to you. Call the killers? Uh, Are they at odds with each other? Or do they just seem to go their separate ways? The guards? The guards versus that other group. 
the guards do what they can to protect the town. They're not out there hunting down the assassins. Mm-hmm. They'd never be able to do that. Gotcha. I mean, they you know they, there's guards down there at the gate, so uh, which is at the south end of town. So we, we do a pretty good job of knowing who's in town. And are we are we safe? In your mind, you're safe okay. as long as you don't cause any trouble. We have no intention of causing trouble. I'd lock, just you know, be safe. Lock your door. Uh, pay attention to what's going on around you. Don't wander around at night. If you do, uh, not saying anything's going to happen to you, but just be safe. Just be safe. It is a group of six. Is that in danger? Probably, usually... probably not. That's a you're a good sized crew. Um, five and a half, I guess, including you. But, <laughs> well. I fight like three men. I'm sure you do. Right, Anyways, right, uh, you got you got a good clear, good looking cleric here in town, uh, having the holy man along with you, right, Gabby? Looks at John Doe okay. or uh, uh, no. Kate Kevorn. Roylar. Roylar. Kevorn. All right. And then you, you got this. Uh, you got this guy L. Dane. He looks like he um, he knows how to take care of. Take care of things. Is he back from peeing? Hello, <laughs> El Dane, have you returned in one piece from uh, your adventure in the bushes? Mikey? I, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm not actually still outside. It's not a zombie apocalypse. There's a chance he's going to come back. <laughs> I put it on the silver piece on the table and I slide it across the table. Yeah. Is there anything else we should know? Oh. Well, I'll tell you, I mean, Bassmar's a good guy. I'm okay with him. The other two guys, I don't trust. They're they're evil guys. I I, I know they are. The other two guys, Fillmore, and Oscar and Fillmore. Yeah. So. Um, How just do you watch, feel about Balmore and? Oh, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Please. Just what? Yeah, you know, just Will Fong, and he is what he is. He, he'll. He he's got a keen sense. He he can. I uh, he must have let you know. No offense to. Uh, the guy with the rainbow eyes. I mean, no offense to him, but uh, he he must have let you win you win your game. I was wondering if you guys were gonna notice. <laughs> uh, he doesn't he doesn't lose uh, e- Efran. He doesn't lose too many card games. I wouldn't play with him again tomorrow. Mm. Matter of fact, I would probably lock your door. He might want his money just, back tonight. Understood. Hey, I appreciate the tip. Only fools repeat their mistakes. What do you know of Lydia? Lydia? Oh, yeah. she, she's she's the fighter that lives up the road. We ex we, we met her as we came in. She gave directions to your to your establishment. Okay, good. Oh, well, she. Uh, yeah, don't mess with her. She'll um she'll knock you guys uh, here and there. Uh, she. They're um she's part of the venturing party that settled down here in town. They so they bring some business to me. How many of them are there? Oh, about five or six oh. around town. Um, not my, not my friend Martin, but he wasn't part of their group. But who's Martin? <laughs> Martin is a Martin's one of my best friends. Me, Martin, and Balmoral. We're. You we, might want to go on mute, Adam. Sorry, buddy. Martin lives on the outskirts of town. One of the best farmers you'd ever see. He really knows his nature. He supplies he, the uh, town well. He he uh, he grows these radishes and onions that that, that I've got on your plate here, and they, you you said that they were some of the best that you've had. They are delicious. Oh, yes. A man to be respected. You know, I I, I mean I I, I guess I, I must really trust you guys. I'm really gabbing a lot tonight, but you know, trust me, me Martin and Balmer, we're going to get to the bottom of this someday. We're going to figure out what's going on with these these guys. It seems you have a difficult challenge. Mm. Well, you know, any uh, information you ever come across in your travels would be well appreciated and and well compensated. Who lives in the castle? Is it the mayor? Well, the mayor. Yeah, the mayor and the guards. And, <coughs> and I mean that the married? school. The, uh, the mayor is not married. They have the school up there. You know, the, the the school for the clerics and for the guard. Do they receive audiences? Do they take? Uh, Take petitioners in the day. Yeah, I guess so. If you've got some business, uh, uh, yeah, she's a she's a little quirky. 
I'm not too sure how um, how much I trust her. She a fair ruler of this people? Yeah, she's a bit of a bully, so I think. Look, I mean, the guard does okay, guarding the town, but... but um, We saw a number of half-orcs uh, frag... Well, them. yeah, you get used to that. There's a lot of orcs serving. there. I mean, there's, there's good orcs, there's bad orcs. You know how it is, right? Are most of the guard of orcish lineage? Uh, some of them. Hmm. There's, um, uh, let me think, about 20 guards people, about a third of whom are orcs, maybe. I wouldn't let that... Uh, influence you. I, I, I'm not a prejudiced man, you know, I'm just a businessman. Mm -hmm. What? That dwarf guy is coming back. He's coming back. But I'm not a prejudiced man at all. <laughs> well, you know, if, uh, if, you're, if you're ever really serious about some ideas on how to deal with these guys, um, you know, look us up in the next day or two. And, yeah, you know, if you get time, go on over talk to um, talk to Balmero and tell tell him that we talked tonight. And sure. he's he's a good guy. You could trust him. Well, I thank you for your time, Abraham. I, I'm gonna ask the classic uh, question. Thank you, thank you for your hospitality. Are there sewers here that we should that could house this guild, or where would you know? Was there quiet places where they would be hanging hiding out? You think? Well, I mean, if you know anything about an Assassin's Guild, you really must be new at this. They, um, they don't hang out together. Well, I mean, even at they these, don't know. Most of them won't know who. Course. Most of them won't know who's in the guild. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, you, when you have one contact person when that's you're so. in the guild, and that contact person has one contact person, and somewhere along the line, it leads up to the the head. Sure. We should like to try to help you find this guild to determine what to be done. Oh, this is the first guy we've talked to. He could be part of the guild trying to throw us off. <laughs> you now just you just filled the beans. He's asking us to do stuff, so we make him feel. Well, like we're it. saying we 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 we're, we're just visiting, and we could if some pops up, we'll look at. If he gives us more information, because he thinks that we're on the side. I've already given him six over. We bought a lot of drinks. <laughs> All right, I think we should yeah. turn in for the night. Next so, at th that moment, glammy. Uh, Glammy leaves the room. The bar is a uh, Abraham. The bar is all cleaned. I got everything all. The money's locked away, put away. I'm. It's late. I'm heading. Uh, I'm heading to bed. He says, "Okay. Yeah. Good night. Good night." And he leaves the room. Abraham then turns to you and says, "Don't trust him either. He's a he's a spy for the mayor." How when do you know such a thing? That's amazing. Because he's my bartender. I know. I know who he hangs around with. I know. I know that. Some secrets get out sometimes. Uh, so a secret has gotten out, and uh, you know it was him. I'm not saying that he's a bad guy. I'm not saying that. Uh, Adam, man, <laughs> <laughs> you're going crazy over there. Changing his avatar with backgrounds. Yeah. All right. So the only person you really trust is, is Relis and the two boys. Where have you been? My best friend Balmoro. And, 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 and Martin, and those are the guys you trust. Mm -hmm. okay, I, I mean, James is okay for uh, taking care of horses, and I'm not going to ask him to protect me with his life, though. But Martin and Balmoral, we'll you know we'll see each other to the the gates of Asarak if we have to. Oh, that was nice. That was good. <laughs> good turn of phrase. All right, all right, I'm, all right, I'm going to head on off. Uh, um, the boys will turn down the lights, so. It's late. It's it's midnight now. So I would I would head to bed if I were you. I agree. We head to bed. We head to bed. Yeah. We, we we meet in room three. Yeah. Let's all have a powwow in room three and lock the door. We we want we actually we want the room that does not. I'm assuming it's even on one side and odd on the other. So we want the door. We want the room that's not next to Wilford. Okay. The the room has two yeah. double beds along the wall, farthest from the wall. Does that makes sense. Two double beds along the wall, farthest from the wall. Doesn't really make sense, does it? Uh, farthest from the window, maybe? maybe farthest from the door is what they, they must the mean. A table with two iron candlesticks and four chairs occupy the center of the room. Near the door is a dresser with an iron candlestick and four drawers. The single window is barred and has shutters on the inside. A large carpet covers the floor, leaving only three inches of floor exposed on each side of the room. Under each bed, concealed by the ruffled bedding, is a chest for storing personal belongings. Can the bar be moved? If we needed to make a getaway out the window, 
uh, Elric just tests the bar to see if it can shift at all. Well, it's, it's it's solid, and you'd have to... There's no latch or a switch? No. Okay. No. It's good protection from, from outside. Abraham protects his, his rooms. Hey, Thief. Yeah? Uh, how long do you want to wait till you go down and see what the wine cellar has? Uh, I'd say we probably should give it at least a good 30 minutes. Okay. You want to take anybody with you? Why would um, you wish to stir up trouble on the first night? I think we can learn more from talking to the people first, no? And it doesn't hurt to look around. Does this man seem like a foolish man that would keep his secrets in a wine cellar? No, but the wine cellar may lead us to other places that we don't know. That we can't see from the street. Yeah. And the worst case scenario is we find some good wine. Well, the worst case is we get busted and we're, we're fucked up. I think you would want to right. weigh those risks of, of discovery Shh. against the advantages to be gained. And it seems to me at this point... We have plenty more to explore before we break into our only host's wine cellar. No? I can persuade him to wait a well, night. Well, seeing as this guy is potentially one of our suspects, <laughs> he seems to be awful forthcoming with information. He certainly seems to be throwing a good... Either he's either he's sincere, or he's throwing a good ruse about wanting to change the town and rid it of the assassins. So it's possible that the assassins might be trying to set him up as one of the, you know, the murder course. suspects. Or, or he is an assassin and he's trying to throw us on trail. It would be a good position exactly. to have the only inn in town. When an assassin who travels from afar arrives, he must go to this inn. This, this Abraham must meet everyone in town at some point, at least all the new faces. Well, I mean, it, potentially though, I mean, if there's if there really is some assassins' guild somewhere, I mean, there's nothing that says those assassins wouldn't go find their find their folks first, and maybe they have something set up for them, you know. You would need only one contact, and that would be the the innkeeper or somebody at the inn. Well, not necessarily. What if they? What if they? Or what if their contact is somebody within the guild itself? I think I mean, you, we don't have enough not, information not, yet. Not to rule out that the innkeeper might not be that person, I'm just saying. It is difficult at this point to draw any conclusions. Yeah, we, we really need to talk to more people. I agree. Correct. We, we, need, we need to find, we need to talk to somebody fairly prominent, not Martin or Barmoral. I think we need to talk to the mayor to get another, another view of, of uh, another version of the coin. Who was killed? The Baron? Yes. No, there's been no reference to the Baron at all. Where does the Baron live? I thought Nobody knows he's dead. But the Baron lives in the castle? No, he lives in the other city he came from. No, the Baron lives in the city we came from. Oh, I got it. And they this town is a mayor. This town is a mayor, not a Baron. Gotcha, and the assassin might have been hired out of here to go there. Sorry, okay. It's past, yeah, we, it's we, past midnight. We could, but very tired. we could try and talk to our su potential suspects. That might be a good place to start. I agree. Well, we've been, so we've been talking to Abraham, who was one of them, so tomorrow we probably should visit uh, Balmoral. Bart, Marl, Bar, whatever his name is. Balmoral. Balmoral. Uh, and although Abraham pledges his friendship with these other two men, there is a chance that they are not friends, as he says. Yeah, the other, the other person that did not come up was Harper, who runs the, who's the high priest. Yeah. So we probably should... Well, there was a reference to the church. Yes. I thought he did mention something about Harper. Uh, he said, Church of Ostrom, Harper is, high, is the chief priest and is in Abraham's backyard. That's really all oh. he had to say. That's all he had to say about that. There is also a suspicion that some of the patrons were in the guild. <laughs> yes. Including Pilar, Oscar, or the short man. Oscar the midget and Philmar. Oh, Philmar. Philmar was a dog trainer, trained puppy dogs. Uh, Abraham didn't trust him, and now much more else to say. Who is the gambler? Uh, Not the Kenny guy. Rogers. Will Fong. Will, Will Fong. Fong. Will Fong. That's right. I hate the scroll, sorry. Will Fong was the gambler, didn't like him, and Oscar the midget uh, does odd jobs at the castle, and he worked for There were four names they rambled off there that I know I misspelled. They were trainers at the castle. Arnesh, Telish, Sangster, and Gilius, or something like that. Mm. Arnesh is the mayor. Oh, okay. Arnesh. So the 
the theater doesn't open, well, the show doesn't start until 8 o'clock. And we could certainly introduce ourselves to Balmar prior to that. But we will have some time in the morning and the afternoon. Yes, you know, I could potentially offer my services to um, Balmar for the evening, utilize my unseen servant to help manipulate objects around and have a small show. That would be like going to a theater that has an established program. Well, you don't know that. If it's vaudeville, acts come and go. Yeah. You could ask, but don't don't be too presumptuous. It could be can taken as an insult. Sure. You go to Broadway and offer to sing for them, they'll be like, yeah. What does that mean? <laughs> yeah. But I'm just trying to work my way in. Sure. It's worth a shot. So. And perhaps uh, Kevlum. Kevhorn? Kev Loyalar can lead the discussion with uh, with the Harper tomorrow at the church. Yes. Correct. And I'd like to speak to some of these adventurers. If there's anyone likely yes. to be neutral in this town, it, it may be them. Lydia and whoever else she came with. Don't forget about the crazy bum. Yes. For Scar. Idiot. What was the name of the uh, crazy fool-ish bum? Priska? Uh, Priska. Priska. P-R-I-S-C-A? P-R-I-S-K-A. So which of the people that we've discussed are up earliest in the morning? I would say perhaps the, the farmer, Martin. You guys, you guys are pretty tired because it's after midnight at this point and you traveled all day. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Let's just, I think it's time for us to turn in. Um, sleep with our back on the door. Uh, maybe you said watch. Two hour watches. Well, I think if, the, if there's. We search the rooms for secret doors. To make sure nobody can get in. While actively looking. Mm. So the elves automatically get a two out of. One or two out of six. Two out of six for active looking. And 50% for concealed doors that are not hidden doors. If we go to uh, sleep, uh, I can regenerate my detect magic if I wanted to use it. You can. Uh, yeah, you can cast detect magic and then pray to gain it back the next day. And it doesn't okay. take Eldane very long to say, hold on here, there's so something underneath the carpet. Ah. So we pull the carpet back. What have you found, Eldane? And the Eldane finds a little trap door set in the floor. You son on, of a gun. Under the carpet. Aha! Hmm. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm waiting for Joel to say, and that's where we end tonight. <laughs> Cliffhanger. <laughs> well... <laughs> How much uh, we've got? We've still got plenty of time to do more investigating. It, how late do you guys want to play? Well, you, I like us to finish around midnight now. I don't like to go past midnight because it's just okay. We can we can finish midnight if that's okay with yeah, if that's yeah, okay yeah, with the other guys. That's not good. Yeah. <laughs> I'm hoping I have enough charge left. But yeah. Hey, you can take my. Uh, do you use a uh, traditional plug for a kindle? No. All right. So Joel, we uh, open up the trap door. Well, we, well, I'm sorry, let me rephrase that. We check, it, we check it to see if it's raped or trapped. There you go. Now you're thinking... Adam, where does it go? Thinking it like a... Hold on, I'm back to AD&D. Yeah. It you, goes down. You don't have any trap there, but you can't open the door because it's locked from the other side. And you don't have a means of uh, is, locating that lock or unlocking it. Is our room on the second floor or the first floor? The first floor. Ah. There... You, you, I mean, you did see a staircase going down when you were at, sitting at your table. Presumably that goes down to the wine cellar. Mm -hmm. What about the other room? If we perform a similar search in the other room, I, I imagine we're in room three. So if we go in four, do we find a, another trap door or any other hidden or concealed doors? So you're saying you're going to leave your room and, and well, go into to. the other room? So we, we went into yeah. the one hall, go to the other. So the whole group is... Yeah, we, want, we, want, yeah. we want to send at least um, the two elves into the other room and have them... We'll check that room. The dwarf, the dwarf and I will sit in, in, stay in our existing room. Okay. With so the doors open so we can see each other. So who's who's going outside? Yeah, uh, who's who's, who's going out? Room. Who's leaving so the room? I am Elvin. Okay, when... Um, the, and also the Elven Ranger, Adam, what's your character's name again? Uh, that's a good question. It is... Uh, almost there. Efron. By the way, before I open the door, I'm going to listen at the door. Okay, Elfrain believes he hears a little whispering out 
out in the hallway somewhere. He can't tell who, what. Even, what, even before leaving our room. Before leaving your room. It, you can't tell if it's right outside your door or somewhere else down the hall. I look at it. I, I open the door up. So you know that elves have an ability, when they open the door, they can still surprise somebody on a roll of one or two out of six. Exactly. So I'll go first. Okay, um, nothing happens when you step out the door, but when Eldane steps out the door, he hears some, um, some shuffling down the hall, around the corner. Remember, you had to go around the corner yeah. from the main room to get to your, get to your room. And the hallway, the hallway's dark. Are you sneaking? Or are you are you going? Or are you running? Uh, no, we're, we're no, no, no. We're yeah. I mean, we're moving silently. Okay, roll roll your uh, move silent percentage. As an elf, that number goes up cons considerably if you're away from the group by more than ninety feet. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so then, uh, you to, yeah. then you have to just use your move silently as a thief. I think it's one to four on a d6 if you're more than 90 feet away from the group as an elf. But as a, but if you're closer, then you got to use your thief skill. So my move silently is 20. <laughs> ah, the joys of being a level one thief. Exactly. All right. Success or failure? Hold on, yeah. I gotta roll it. Uh, an eleven. Yeah. Okay. Is this our first die roll? Yeah. Well, no, the charger will not All right, so you're able to slither down the hall to around the corner. Did he succeed? Yep. Oh my gosh, it's mighty. Wow. And you, you you can still hear the two voices. Um. You turn around, you you discover actually they were at the north the north um. Hallway. What, let's see. What I, I told you guys were in room three and four. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Um, so going. All right. So going back to the original corner that you had rounded, you can see almost right in front of you, no more than ten feet. You would have run into them if you um, if you weren't so quiet. Are um, two people. You can't tell who they are because it's so dark but you could tell one of them's a very short person he and have well, wait, like I, I can like, see in darkness well yeah. you that that's right you rec you can recognize Oscar and Fillmore they're bending over at the doorway sliding something under the door it's it's um somebody else's room and then they they stand back up and now they uh, are slithering out to the door that leads to the you know, the main room, and they uh, they make their way out there and close the door. They don't appear to hear you or see you. Uh, I follow them. Okay, as you as you get to the uh, door that leads to the main room, you start to hear noise in the room that they slid something under the door. You see a, a lamp go on. Get out of there. It's just their bill. It's a trap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now, now you can. <laughs> you're you're following. Okay, you're following Oscar and Filmar, like like you said. But now the uh, door is starting to open, and uh, Efran is still out there in the hallway, because he also he also walked out the room. He didn't follow. Eldan, but he's standing out in the hallway. What are you doing, Ephraim? What are you doing, Ephraim? So I just see Eldran just go around the corner? Yeah, you, he went around the... He, he slithered around the corner and disappeared. I wait for him. You, you realize, though, if the door opens, you will be seen. Yeah, the, there's a door directly in front of you down the hall. That is, uh, There's a lamp that went on on the other side of the door. You can see it from underneath the door. So you're looking down the hall, it, it turns wow. to the left, which is where um, Mikey went, where the other two guys went, but right in front of you there's a doorway on the far wall that leads to a room, and that's the room that they slid something under the door, and, that, and then subsequently the lamp turned on and there's some noise in there. 
Oh, so was I able to, uh, to see them sliding that under the door, too, from down the hall? Oh, yeah, I guess you did, since I just told you. Well, yeah, he's got, he's got six you, you, feet. I mean, you, can, feet see, feet you can see it in the dark, so so you were able to see it. You can't uh, tell what it was. I, I go down the hall and I say, are you okay? Where's the bathroom? <laughs> you see people stealthily you, putting something under the door, so you're going to... Unstealthily, you say, "Are you okay?" Okay, the door's uh, starting to open now. You, you hear the bolt unlocking, very, very softly and slowly and quietly. He, he obviously I, I feel, doesn't I want to wake like anybody I up. Duck into a door, duck into one of our rooms. What about Mikey? I, I, Mikey already oh, left. He followed the other I two guys. The corner, I don't see him anymore. He followed the other guys. He'd only worry about himself. So I'll duck back into the room where everybody else is, and I'll tell them what happened. Okay. We, we, I just saw the, the two guys whose names I don't remember. Oscar I just saw them sliding. Yeah, I just saw Oscar and Elmar sliding something under the door at the end of the hall, all quiet-like. And then uh, Elmar uh, went and took off after him, and now that door is starting to open. Hell, they... I, I have a mirror in my possession. Do mm -hmm. I Can I... If I hold it out and try to look down around, can I see? It's dark. You can see dark. I know. I felt. <laughs> I don't know if you can um, I have see. Vision. Yeah, through through a light. mirror though. I don't, I don't think you could do that. That's a fine question. I'll go to the internet. I'm sure this question has been asked before. Can you see use infravision through a mirror? All right. So I mean, I have half, I have infrared spectrum, so I can see up to 60 feet of darkness, noting varying degrees of heat radiation. I'm, I may not be able to tell who it is. I should be able to say the general size. I should be able to tell if it's Rellis or Abraham based on size, but I shouldn't be able to determine much detail off of that. And since it's in a mirror, if you want to make it harder, I'll roll. I'm open that. All right, roll a 2d6. You'll succeed on a 1 or a 2 on either one of those. 3 and 3. Well, it's um. Perfect. <laughs> Good idea. It's a pretty big guy. You'll have to try to remember... Who the big guys were that you saw? There weren't any. <laughs> big, big guy meaning like five five, I guess. No, like big, big like six feet. Orc. Well, whoever it is um, went down the hallway, down to um, the same direction that Phil Mar and Oscar went and uh, Eldane went, and he's doing it very slowly and carefully. Do we leave Mikey out there? What do we do, guys? He's put us in a little bit of a, of a pickle. Well, I think we we go after the guy who's going after Mike. We cannot let our comrades alone. We must go after them and make sure that he is safe. All right, so put your backpacks on. Let's go. I'm trying to remember how to. I grab um... my sword. Yeah, I have my staff. And my staff, because that's so threatening. I do think my steel. <laughs> I think the elf and the rangers can sneak to some extent, if I'm not mistaken. The elf's got the one in four, he's 90 feet in front, that even though he's not up to you. And I think a ranger can do something. Of course, the problem is we have to be 90 feet apart. <laughs> yeah, that's not too far, though. Adam, did was there any sneaking abilities that I told you for the ranger? I don't think so. Let me check, though. Uh, Rangers surprise opponents 50% of the time and are themselves surprised only one out of six times. Oh, and they can track. Outside. Outside and inside. No, outside and inside, yes. Inside, it's not as good. It's like 65%. But outside, 90%. Hopefully I can keep this guy in sight, so I'll, I'll, I'll go after him sneakily, quietly, 90 feet away from everybody else. And Jewel, obviously, so, as I'm following these guys, I'm moving in the shadows yeah. quietly. Okay, you're seeing the messages I'm sending to you, right? Oh, no. It, it appears that improvision can be... I got it now. Okay. 
No more than three rangers may ever operate together at any time. How many do we have? Two. Myself and... Uh, rangers must be good, too, by the way. You feel good. I think we're both going to feel good. I'm looking for the message, Joel. I heard it, but I can't find uh, what you wrote. No, I didn't send one to you. I sent one to Mike. It's oh, I must have heard the noise from Mike's side then. Okay. You heard from, you heard from Mike here. Sorry, Adam. No problem. Joel, you're getting pretty good with the technology, too. It took me a while to find it, but <laughs> I found it. Thank you. Chris, did you see that information? Information works on uh, mirrors? I do. Oh, that's interesting. Where are you seeing that? What does it say? Uh, it says you can use it on mirrors. <laughs> are you are you making that up right now? No, no, I looked it up. It said that uh, <clears throat> infrared works the same as visual light. Oh. It would. You know, expect it to. Yeah, the same. Scientifically, yes. That makes sense. Why are you so much stuff? It's kind of comfy right now. Yeah. yeah. It is cooler here in Shelton than it is in Milford. Yeah. By Milford, I've got you by like 7 to 10 degrees. Okay, uh, Ducat, what, what is your plan? Uh, I'm going to hang back, and uh, so me we'll and the dwarf are going to slowly bring up the rear. Do we let the two rangers... So you're all leaving the room, then? Trail ahead. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so, you're, so you're all leaving the room. Are you Chris, what are you doing? Uh, I'll stay in the room, perhaps. All right, Jeff, Jeff, Chris, and I will stay in the room and I'll do the other three trades yeah. around. You guys are pretty tired. You're you're gonna you're starting to find it hard to even concentrate. Give the secret off, guys. No. <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Oh, that's not it. All right. I thought Jeff was done. Wait, is the secret not this? Even better, give the secret handshake through the door. <laughs> anyway, Chris, you're the three. What what are you guys doing? Uh, we're moving I already know what I'm doing. I, I, I'm going to go. I'm going to watch the big guy. The two rangers are tracking their friend, their prey, the, the rogue. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. Just make a note of that here. The three of us stay in the room. Uh, Josh, Jeff. You know, normally I would not want to do this, but a neutral good ranger would want to keep his friend safe. Adam Guy tracking. Okay. So, do you need tracking rolls? Do you need move silently rolls? Um, Depends what you're trying to do. What are you uh, trying I to think do? Both of the Rangers, Efrain and Elric, are moving silently and attempting to track the big guy who, in turn, is trying to track uh, El Eldrain. The road. What the hell is your name? Yes, Eldin is tracking the two guys. The big guy is after him, and then Adam is after the big guy. Yep. Adam and uh, and Adam and Elric. Okay. Elric and Rumble. So we got both Rangers and the Elf Rogue out there. Do we have to be ninety feet apart from each other, Bob? For an Elf. I think you have to be 90 feet away from the party. You're an off ranger, Bob. But I'm a human ranger. I am, I am definitely 90. I'm guessing at this point I'm 90 feet away. Based on where I know I am. Based on where I know I am, I definitely am. So are you trailing behind me, Bob, or are you right up there with me? I'm tra I guess I trail behind you so you can take advantage of the 1 to 4 out of D6. So you're super okay. happy. So, so you're keeping an eye on me. Yeah, but I don't have any okay. vision like you do. <laughs> okay. So, so maybe maybe I should stand step into the light every now and then. <laughs> Darter. Let's just find our friend so we can return to safety. Now I know okay. that Joel is so typing like a madman, so I have to assume that he is advising the rogue what he is seeing right now. Adam, what's your guy's name? Ephraim. Ephron. Oh, Ephron. Spell it. E-F-F-E-R-O-N. Like Zach Ephron? I, I, I don't know how to spell his name. So Elf Ranger, right? Elf Ranger. Elf Ranger. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> you, you could also call me Lone Hunter. You know, 
if you're not good enough to speak Elvish. You say everybody calls you that, but I've never seen anybody call you that. I don't think that means we did that. Means. Anyway, do you guys find Mikey mm -hmm. or no? We're waiting to find out. Uh, so you guys make it into the big room. Uh, you don't see anybody there. It's pretty clear that everybody who went into there left out the front door. So we use tracking and we determine they all went through the front door, so we go through the front door. It's the only exit, so it's a pretty... Yeah. Uh, unless they went downstairs. But you, you probably would have heard the stairs creak or something. So we're following through the front door, trying to find the road to make sure he's safe. Okay. Or the people, whoever we find. You're be it's taking a minute or two because you're trying to be quiet. No problem. Three conversations at once. This is what it must have felt like for Josh when he ran the uh, email bombing campaign. Actually, there were a few times we spoke a party with some quarrels, right? Oh, well, that's true. <laughs> I'll be with you guys in just a second. We've got some things going on here. No problem. All right, since I'm hanging out my room, Robert, what am I uh, cleaning up here? What are you taking home? You're taking everything, buddy, but what we need to do is we need to find a container mm -hmm. for the taco stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't You can't eat all this. We have pizza truck on. I have the yeah. Chinese for tomorrow. You know what? You make tacos. Tacos. Yeah. Yeah. tacos. What's up? You make tacos. You want some? No. Oh, Jeff's awake. For the moment. He, he sort of just roused. For now. His nap is over. The only thing I need back is this. And the, um, the you want to switch back? Take the spinach back. Yeah. So how are you going to make tacos on it? You're going to make tacos. Oh, you've got to put that in the tacos. Word. Yeah. I wonder why my pants get tired of being nice. Oh, and I'm going to take that for the rest of it. All right, does, uh, does Ephraim have any special uh, special abilities while he's walking around or sneaking around? Yeah, Ephraim has a few special abilities. Ephraim has Improvision. Ephraim can sneak one to four out of a D6 without be, being noticed and surprise someone else. Mm -hmm. If Ephraim is walking through a door, then those chances drop down to one and two out of a 1D6. And as a ranger, Ephraim surprises people 50% of the time. Uh, so you guys go out to the road. It's pretty dark there, but it's light enough so that you could see the path. You can hear the guard somewhere to the south, but you don't know... Um, you know, how far yeah but but it's pretty clear that if you guys just go out there and start making a lot of noise that you're going to attract a lot of attention really quick which is why they are both both sneaking and there's tracking but i think rangers can track as well is there a success for tracking yeah um outdoors tracking base success is 90 percent in well-lit conditions and then you have some modifiers. And let me pull that up real quick. That's clerics, that's assassins. Outdoors, a base 90% chance of a ranger being able to follow a creature modified as follows. For every creature above one in the party, you add two. It's only one creature, so you're still at 90. For every 24 hours that have elapsed, subtract 10%. 24 seconds have elapsed. So that's no, not an impact. And for every hour of precipitation, subtract 25%. So base 90. Um, so you, you, may want to add a, you may want to add a penalty for being at night, perhaps, but it doesn't mm -hmm. specify what the penalty might be. What so, did you say, Adam? Sure. That's what I was just asking about was low, you know, being nighttime and low light. Yeah. 
Did I miss anything? So should we write it down? Mm, not yet. It's going to get interesting in a minute. So did anybody stay behind in the room? Yes, yeah, we have three So the cleric, the dwarf, and so the so you're by yourself then. No, I'm trailing the ranger. I'm the other okay. ranger who can also sneak fifty percent of the time or surprise people fifty percent of the time. So I think you're ordering the short guy and the tall guy snuck out, followed by the elder rose, followed by the big guy who came out of the room, followed by Ephron, who was mm -hmm. sneaking, and then 90 feet behind him is uh, the other ranger, me. Okay. And both rangers are trying to sneak and trying to trap. Okay. But the elf is better at sneaking than the human is. Well, the elf, it's pretty obvious where the guy went. I mean, the, the guy isn't being terribly careful to, to cover his tracks. He's just trying to be quiet. And, and as I go through areas, I try to make it fairly obvious to another ranger that, you know, the way that we went, so that I, make it, I try to make it easy for Bob to follow our tracks. I do this before. What? Write messages to both these guys. Told it, told it no, he was going to take typing classes to do uh, DMing. <laughs> well, the, the irony is it's when the work of Adam was in the house. Yeah, that's true. You guys realize we've just broken all the rules. We've, we've got a tremendously split party right now. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Mike and Adam, you both managed to stay quiet somehow. Wow, okay. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. But do you ever really know in AD&D? You think you're quiet, no. but you're never sure. Now, Elric, you saw Ephraim sneak off the path into the woods. And when you took another look why, you can see why. Because straight ahead, there's a, uh, a, guard, a guard post. Oh. That that leads the road out outside of town, and you could see a lot of the woods outside, uh, outside of town. You saw uh, Ephraim go into the woods that are off the road. As far as you can tell, the guards did not see him. Okay. Did they see me? I'm 90 feet behind. As far as you can tell, nobody nobody knows you're there. Not the guys in front of you, not the guards. So if I step off into the woods now, to add even further trees to obscure my vision of the guards, maybe I can traverse diagonally to catch up with Ephraim and minimize my chance of being seen. Okay. So we've traveled a ways. What distance have we traveled so far following them? Um, let's see. Get... Back to, like, to Lydia's house? Like, no, you're, like... you're heading south. Let me see if I can... Oh, okay. Toggle this map. Let's see if I got this. Okay. How no. Oh, you, you, oh, you have to scroll down yourself. I did already. Further down. Yeah. Scroll. Scroll down. You're you're at the uh, edge of the map. You. Those guys went into area D. Oh, I see. Into the woods, far south of the village. We're outside of the village yeah. now. Okay, that's helpful. Well, Elric is a man of honor. He will not leave a companion in trouble. He'll follow ahead. And now you get a great big surprise because you just all of a sudden bumped into Elric and Ephraim who are hiding. Son of a... 
Boy, I'm Elric. So I, I bumped into the other ranger who was hiding. Okay, and, uh, and Mikey? Okay, so the three of you are all together now. You can converse uh, out loud. Okay. The three of you have managed to sneak into the woods one at a time. Uh, you manage to be quiet and somehow keep your wits and, and not uh, you not make a lot of noise. So you can tell each other what you've seen. Why did you stop here? Ah, sorry, gentlemen. I did not see you there. I heard something. Have you found the prey, or have you lost them? No, they're they're uh, they're all together. It was uh, it was Captain uh, Captain what's his face? Captain Bassmar. Captain Bassmar, the the barge man I was following. Yeah, he's the one who snuck out. uh, Of the the two guys, slid something underneath his door. Um, he's the one who snuck out to meet, uh, meet up with them. You can't get close enough to hear what they're saying to each other. They're, they're speaking very softly and very carefully. So he, he snuck out to meet with uh, Oscar and so, Fillmore. Yeah, Fillmore. Oscar and Fillmore snuck out. Uh, Mikey followed them. Captain Bassmar went out to meet them. He was not following Mikey, but it turned out he was walking behind Mikey. And then Adam was following Captain Bassmar. And then Elric was following Adam. Got it. So, and by great chance and luck, you managed to not get discovered. And yet, you all managed to meet up in We're the woods. We're all very, very fortunate. The gods of nature have smiled upon us, clearly. Uh, Efren, do you, or Eldrin, do you think that you can get closer to hear what they're saying? He tells you he's already tried. They're, they're speaking very softly, and, mm-hmm. and there's just not a good place to... To walk up and hide. Is there anything else that we can do? Uh, clearly, we can't get closer without being discovered, and I would not risk our discovery just yet. And keep in mind that um, the guards, the guard watching, the marching guard is still walking around. They march. Apparently, they go all around all night. Mm-hmm. At this point, perhaps we return to our rooms. What say you? Well, I, I wouldn't risk trying to get any closer, to be honest with you, to try to hear them. I mean, it's yeah. obvious that they're, they're definitely in cahoots with each other or something, and uh, they definitely are in cahoots with the guards because the guards let them through. Oh, they did? Yes. Well, then perhaps there's the, one thing we can do. The guards let Oscar and Fillmore by. Captain Bassmar snuck around through the woods. Right, right, right. They, they let the, he, right. He's like the two guys I was following through. Well, there's one thing we can do, and time is of the essence. If we return back quickly now, we can look through the room of the captain, or perhaps even Oscar in his cohort. You're, you're assuming nobody else is in those rooms. I am. Because because we have four in our room. You don't know what, where Oscar and Filmar came from. You only know where Captain Bassmar came from. Okay. Well, we can check out Captain Bassmar's room, and then uh, one person can make like an owl, so allowing us to escape before he returns. You were smart enough to recognize that Captain Bassmar's room had number five on the door. So you had no- room number three and four. He has number five. Also, Abraham told us the room numbers of the captain and the gambler, I think, as well. No, he didn't give us captain. He gave us gambler. Oh, yes. okay. The gambler was next to us, and now we know the captain's five. What say you? Should we do that? Why don't we have the thief stay here and keep an eye on these guys? Well, their me- their meeting is starting to break up. Try. You see a couple of handshakes, and and they're and now they're starting to look around to see if anybody is watching them. Do we think we have we're far enough away that we can get a lead on getting back to the inn ahead of them, or does it seem we're so close that uh, we risk ourselves by moving right now? Well, they're about twenty feet away from you, and and oh. they they move quick and. I mean, Eldrick tells you that those two guys were moving quick while Captain Bassmar is moving slowly and carefully. There, I mean, it's woods, but it's not like it's a forest. I, so you could still see the road from there. Eldrick gestures to remain still. He stops moving and talking. Okay, so the, the other two guys are walking back to the road and uh, walking back toward the guard stand. And Captain Bassmar is just standing there, trying to stay hidden. <laughs> Attack him, hit him down, and tear you. Group force is not going to work in this. You don't know what enemies we're making yet. You could be an ally. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. 
So now Captain Basmar starts his way into the woods where you guys are. Is he heading directly for us? Well, he's he's following the the same path, not really path, but the same route that he took to get to where he was. Are we at which, risk of being discovered if we remain still? Yeah, you're at risk. If, How close are you to where we are, Joshua? Um, the other side of town. You're sleeping on our bed. He he, I mean, he probably doesn't know you there, so that's gonna you know, aid you. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there a nearby pebble or stone or piece of stick or wood on the ground? Yeah, there's plenty of them around. So, Everybody can spot one very easily if you wanted to. Uh, Elric picks up a, a twig or a stick and throws it in such a way uh, that uh, it's opposite behind the captain. Well, okay, he, so he is south heading north. north. So Elric will throw the stick so that it'll sound as if noise figure, is appearing figure. behind the captain. So you guys are about right there. Yeah. So farther and south of the captain, another 10 feet behind him or 20 feet. Just enough to make a noise to distract him. Okay. So he um, he hears something. He ducks down really quick. He, he, sees, he ducks down right next to a bush and, and ducks out of sight. And, he, and it's very quiet. Okay. Maybe he'll choose a different path when he comes back up. And he whispers, uh, Elric whispers, you guys have any other ideas? Yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently I'm a bad ranger. All right, so the, the, the um, suspense is killing you. You're sitting there for a minute or two. He finally, he finally peeks up, looks around very carefully. And um, he is very slowly starting to resume the direction toward you. He he obviously thought somebody was behind him, and he wanted to be careful and make sure that he he might figure out maybe it was an animal or sure. and, and and nothing like that. He's being careful. He he obviously can sneak around. Mm -hmm. That he he's no dummy at this. Yeah, so I'm still considering that he's a captain, a merchant, and and a big guy. He's, he seems surprising. to be pretty stealthy. Yeah, seems like he's almost been trained in the ways of stealth. One could say. You could say that. You just did. Very interesting, or the way that the trade craft of an assassin, even. So you guys are still standing there. So all of a sudden, he he stealthily and well, quickly moves just past you. Crouching there, we're crouching there, not just yeah. standing. I, I would say okay. you're just kind of standing there. Yeah, okay. You got you guys, are, you guys are you guys are trying to stay out of sight. He he passes within five feet of Elric. But uh, manages to slip by, and uh, resumes the path back up to. Um, totally failed his nose check. Got it. Back <laughs> toward the. He's obviously heading back toward the end. We have a Justin generous DM this evening. <laughs> uh, we wait uh, a few minutes, and then I assume uh, we return back to the end in a similarly stealthy manner. And just as you hit the path again, there's a guard. A, a, a traveling guard pa pa group, a guard patrol, who orders you to stop. Stop, you three. How far away are the guards? They're about 20 feet from you. 20 feet? How in the world did they get so close? Uh, it's dark. <laughs> because because yeah. somebody said we have a just DM. <laughs> <laughs> Elric runs in the opposite direction. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I say again, halt, all three of you. He's lightly yeah. encumbered. He's got no armor on. He thinks that he might be faster than these guys. Uh, he turns to his colleagues and he whispers, spread out. And they all spread We go into the woods, all three of us, right? Yeah. Yep. Into the woods? Into the woods. So the, the three guard patrol uh, run to the, side, the edge of the woods and... And you can hear one of them saying, "We, you thieves, better not come back here again. We will cut your heads off when we see you. Oh. You keep running, you nasty orcs." This is a thieves forest. Interesting. <laughs> Are they pursuing? Or these no. guys must yeah. suck if they if they looked at us and thought we were orcs. Worst guards ever. <laughs> and with that, that's how we're gonna conclude the night. Okay. With the three of you in the woods, with a 
angry guards yelling at you, mistaking you for orcs, and with the other three wondering what's going to happen back at the inn. Oh, no, I'm sleeping. <laughs> yeah, you guys got sleep tonight. I'm out like a light in the uh, room. Wake me up, Josh. <laughs> yeah, I'm with me. I sleep right yeah. like back to the door. Kenthorn is dreaming about that uh, that serving lunch. Dude, we're all dreaming about the serving lunch. Hey, Kenthorn, do you think it might be good Correct. to memorize detect evil instead of detect magic? Then you can tell who the bad guys are immediately. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, that sounds, yeah. I was just thinking, <laughs> you can walk into the bar and then just cast a spell and look at everybody. Yep, oh yeah, I'm doing it. I question the, the use of that spell. So. Everybody has their, their badge. <laughs> Alright, good, good, good investigative job tonight. Yeah, I feel like we probably missed out on some questions that we should have asked. But I guess well, you're... We only went through the, the first night, so we're moving a little more slowly than I thought, but the first night's going to be a slow night. Well, we, got, we, we, got really far. Yeah. we didn't actually yeah. start playing until 9.45. That's <laughs> after yeah. all the characters. That was pretty good. But you've, uh, you've already asked some good questions. You've started some good uh, detective work. There's a whole lot more to go. Hmm. And you've also gotten to see some of the major characters already yeah, and interact true. with them. Very good, Joel. Fantastic. Yeah, good, work. good work, man. Good two weeks. So we'll see each other in uh, two weeks. I, I'm going to be remote. Colt's going to be a little late. I'm going to be a little late that night. Okay. Okay. And I'll be. I might be a little late depending on if I go out with clients or not. You want to hold on these three, Bob? Oh no, you need to be late. I'll always be a little late. Hey Chris, you uh, if you need help rolling up your second character, and you still probably have to build some flesh out your first character. Let me know, I can walk through that with you. Alright, that sounds good. Hey, hey guys, I'm gonna head home now. Yep. Drive safe. <laughs> oh, wait, he's home. Look at that. Oh, wait, wait, I'm there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. Alright, guys, well, Joel, it was awesome. Thanks. I'll see you guys uh, two weeks. Alright, we'll see Take you later. Take care, Mike. Yeah, talk to you guys. Good night, guys. Thanks, guys. Have a good one. You too. Okay, do I need to do anything here? I'll take care of it. Joel, nice job with the technology, man. That was really good. Yeah, you did a good job of toggling between one tab and another. Is that writing messages to the two of those guys at once? What's that? I was writing messages to the two of those guys at once. Yeah, you were juggling. Because um, I'm having one check to see if he hears the other and see if the other hears the first <laughs> one. <laughs> That's awesome. Josh, you want me to uh, turn this off? Yeah, shut it down.